Well, welcome in, everybody. I have a special treat for you all. We have a licensed investigator with the state of Florida who is familiar with Sarah's case, and she's worked with the Orange County jail before the court system so she's familiar with that as well welcome in florida pi sam hello thanks for having me thank you for being here now due to the fact that this case is still ongoing we're not going to get into a lot of your background just yet we'll get into that later on maybe um but we're going to talk today just specifically about the jac and you had reached out to me because <laughs> You saw that I was struggling online trying to understand how the JAC works, how the processes work. And and you were like, OK, you, this girl needs help. And no, that's not what that's not what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't that bad. I, don't know, I promise. But yeah, so, the JAC is confusing even to those of us who work with it on the daily. So go ahead and tell me. OK, so here's the deal. I, I'm, I'm, let's pretend I'm the attorney. I'm gonna be like, Sarah, we're going to play like I'm the judge. No, we're going to be, I'm going to be an attorney and I want to go hire uh, an expert witness. What do I do? Okay. Well, if you are a private defense attorney, that means there have been at least two defense attorneys before you, the public defender, and then something called office of regional conflict counsel. If they've both conflicted off and now you're private defense attorney with a contract with the JAC, and you want an investigator or another expert, you're going to draft a motion and a proposed order. You're going to email that to the JAC and wait for their response. Normally, they'll say no objection. You take that email along with your motion and your proposed order, and you upload it via the Florida e-filing portal. And then the judge will sign off on it, and you can go get your expert. They do, on occasion, object in which case they ask for, they write a, a motion in response and ask for a hearing. And then it's ultimately up to the judge to decide whether or not they're gonna grant the bunny. Okay. And once he gives that order, is it set in stone? The JAC has to follow it? Uh, yeah, I mean, the JAC does have to pay for the services, but within what they say in their responses, their motions, is that that expert has to be willing to abide by the JAC guidelines, which usually means they agree to be paid at the amount the JAC has authorized, which is an hourly amount for different experts and different investigators. So like a fact investigator gets paid differently than a mitigation specialist. And then you have like the forensic specialist and you have on and on. So there are different rates for different positions. Okay. And I did have that pulled up and maybe once, you know, if you want to, if you don't mind, I'd love to continue talking with you about uh, this case and other and future videos if, if, if you have sure. time, but we can pull up the JAC rates and talk about them more in, in detail. I wanted to ask you, although we're not going to get into specifics about Sarah's case, I wanted to ask you about how this is kind of, it's a, it's a rare, I guess it's rare what's going on when you have this many attorneys coming and going and yes. what I'm concerned about. And a lot of people have said this online either it's all over Reddit, you know, how much money are they spending on this woman? Because you've got all these attorneys coming and going. And what, what you had told me in a previous discussion was just because JAC has approved something doesn't mean it's just necessarily been paid out. But my question, I guess, in this is, so let's say an attorney, and this is a general question. Let's say an attorney comes in, he hires a private, we'll say a, an investigator. And then a, he comes off the case. A new attorney comes in. He wants to hire an investigator, but he wants to hire a different investigator. JAC is going to pay for both those investigators? Yes, they will. Um, in fact, an attorney can switch investigators during the course of a case. So, we're approved money in in hours. So, for example, we used to ask for about 50 hours in a in an initial order. And if you think about a 40 hour work week, right? That's five days worth of work, and then, you know, a little more. My math is terrible. Um, so they the attorney may ask the the original attorney may say, "Hey, I want to use this investigator." They may not name a specific investigator. They may just say, "I want this many hours for an investigation for an investigator." And then 
just because that amount of out those amount of hours are granted, it doesn't mean that first investigator used them all. JSC may object if you're asking again for like a duplicate if they think it's duplicative work, then they may have an objection. Like I said, you have to email them first with your proposed uh, with your motion, your proposed order, and then you wait you send it to them, they respond whether they object or not. If they do object, then that would ultimately be up to the judge to have a hearing and decide whether or not they were still going to grant money. But in terms of money spent on cases, um, just from you, what you were adding up the other day, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that all of it has been expended and it's actually not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, that's nothing. It's kind of nothing <laughs> for a murder case. It really and truly isn't a lot. Um, you know, and if you were to go out and hire a private attorney to do a murder case, you're getting into those numbers there as well. Okay. Well, I mean, I, that I think that's what a lot of people are concerned about is like they keep doing the same thing over and over again over the past four years on this one case. And it's I guess it's hard for anybody, including the judge, and JAC to understand what this past investigator has done yet. And are we duplicating our work yet? And that's just something, a, a chance they've got to take because her rights, they have to give her the right to a, a fair trial. Right. And it would be the same with replacing the attorney. You know, you can't expect the next attorney to fully embrace the last attorney's work you can't I mean it's possible they can and just pick up where that attorney left off but maybe they say hey we want to depose different people we're not happy with this we want to do that and you know it, it can work the same way with investigations I will tell you that for specialists investigators experts we have to turn in extremely detailed billing to the tenths of the hour, just the same as an attorney has to do when they're billing a client by the hour. And we have to explain for everything we do, and we are limited in the scope of what we are allowed to do. And you have attorney-client privilege, correct? Correct. So tell me exactly what it is that an investigator would do then. Well, Different investigators do different things. I work in criminal defense, obviously, with the JAC, which is why I reached out to you. Um, so what I I can speak to what I do. I don't know how others uh, do it, but usually I work with the lawyer um, to get the discovery from the state or a previous attorney. Now we're using terabytes worth of hard drives because we're getting so much. Um, so we... I go about trying to obtain the discovery, go and meet with the client at the jail. Some of our clients are very young, and so their parents will come into the attorney's office, and we just sort of meet and discuss and get a feel for the case. For, from that, I review the start by reviewing the police report and looking at the narratives mainly of the detectives. I'm looking for just to get an, an understanding, and then I'm going to start a timeline. And I'm going to start a witness, I don't know what you'd even want to call it, like t table or chart, whatever I'm feeling like that day, right? Whatever I think fits the case. And I'm starting to outline who, what, when, where. Right. Okay. Do you, it's, I think a lot of people are under the misconception that you guys go out and <laughs> go out and look for like a cheating spouse or something and that's right. not exactly what it's all about right so yeah people have it's really interesting when i tell people what i do for a living because they're like oh my god that sounds so great that's so glamorous that that's so interesting like you're watching too much tv because that is not how it works a lot of people go into insurance defense investigation which means you sit in the car and you watch for people who have done workman's comp claims to actually be physically okay so that's one big area. Then there are other investigators that do family law type work where maybe they are following people around. They do surveillance and things like that. What I do, what I've chosen to do is this. I work for the, the criminal uh, courts for indigent defendants, and I'm paid by the Justice Administration Commission. 
I do get some privately retained cases, which means that an individual or an attorney approaches me on their own and they're paying out of their pocket and I'm not going through my contract with the state. So you guys would do this, like the depositions and whatnot? Um, no, the attorney has to conduct the deposition. However, um, I have been asked in the past to assist with drafting deposition questions. I've been asked to assist in determining who will be deposed. And um, once the depositions are conducted, uh, the attorneys usually order transcripts and I review them and most especially compare them to other statements the witness may have given on the record. And in a recent case, I had um, a group of six individuals who were originally investigated for the case. And amongst them, they probably each gave two to three statements to law enforcement and one or two de depositions. So it was an incredible amount of information. I do more reading and writing than I do anything else. It's almost like you stand to the side and just kind of pay attention to the details. Yeah, yeah. Um, and almost I like you're profiling them. Kind of, yeah. But I'm also like, I'm also looking at warrants, I'm looking for probable cause, I'm not liking a whole lot of what I see. Um, I'm sort of, in a way, I'm coming back and fact checking the police. Also, I'm going out to the crime scene if there is one to go to. Um, you know, some some of my cases are, are shootings on the highway. So there's not really anything that can be done about that. I can go to evidence viewings. Um, I could take pictures. I can go interview witnesses. Um, I review all the discovery. Like I see all the photos, all the videos, all the body cam. Um, I check, like you check the docket and you've been reading all the different filings. The state has to respond to uh, the defense's notice uh, or demand for discovery. So in their response to that, they start listing out the discovery you should be getting. And I've started pulling that and double checking it against what we're getting because we're not getting it all. Oh. And the witness, the, yeah, I noticed that they, so that happens quite often when the attorneys or the, the prosecutors withhold information. So like, I don't want to be too accusatory <laughs> um, by law. In the state of Florida, and I can't remember if this is a federal rule, if it's only a, a state rule, they have 15 days from the date that the defense files a demand for discovery. They're supposed to turn it all over in within 15 days. I can tell you with regularity that does not happen. Um, discovery can come in all the way up to trial, and there are some not all, but there are some prosecutors who are not playing fair and they are holding on to stuff. And we're aware of it. You can file a motion to compel and, you know, it might just be too late at that point. I mean, it's it's a problem. I, I feel like I'm seeing more of it or recognizing more of it, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, and that's a whole that's a whole other topic. And, and I don't mm. want to. And I, and because of what you do, I don't want to get too much into that because you're, because of your, your, um, we've disclosed where you work out of <laughs> technically. So, um, what about these mitigators? Because we noticed that in reading the docket, you have investigator, like for example, um, in Sarah's case, Bankowitz wanted to keep Billy Lane from prison break on for the investigation part or no, for the litigation part, but he wanted to hire a different investigator. So I didn't realize there was a difference between mitigation versus investigation. Yeah, there is. So um, the easiest and most simple explanation is that uh, an investigator, I'm speaking for the state of Florida, by the way. Right. So I, I can't speak to states outside of Florida. Um, an investigator is sort of a fact finder, right? And a fact confirmer mitigation is the psychological sociological part of of this and and you see it the most or the jac will pay for an actual mitigation specialist in death penalty cases and a mitigation specialist has to have either a pi license or they have to be a, a florida barred attorney 
Um, they have to have a advanced degree of some sort. I think it's only a master's though, maybe in social work, um, psychology, something along those lines. And really that's all, but it's a big deal. It's really important because for example, if you just, if you saw any of the horrific Wade Wilson trial, they did, a, a they do the penalty phase. So they do the guilt innocent phase. They found him guilty. Then they go to the penalty phase and you heard the state put on aggravators and then the defense tries to put on mitigators, which is like, yeah, his brain doesn't work right. Whatever, whatever. Those are the mitigation factors. But if you've got a really good mitigation specialist, they're starting from day one, right? The attorney goes and gets them right away. They get second phase attorney and then they go get a mitigation specialist because it can be really, really time consuming to gather all that information. So I would see where a mitigation specialist would work directly with, say, like the expert witness, the psychologist and all that, just just on behalf of the individual's mental capacity. Right. Well, they do. Um, they may recommend tests and doctors and whatnot, but they also spend a lot of time with the defendant, with their family, with their friends. They may go, you know, they're going back to the origin story for some of these cases. Um, for some of these individuals, because we have seen some really mentally ill people come through the Florida courts and it's, you know, they go and they get school records and, and if they've been in the Department of Corrections, they go get that entire record. They get any kind of health, mental, you know, you name it. All these records get compiled. They discuss with the attorneys. They may recommend certain kind of testing to be done and apply to the JAC to pay for that. Okay. We had talked, um, and I had a couple of people in the comments telling me, Carrie, no, this is how it works. But I kept talking about how I, I wondered why Wooten had come off the case because I saw that, um, judge Wooten. Well, I guess I'm trying to remember when the other one, uh, Crane, came on, but judge Wooten eventually was moved off of the, as a judge for, Sarah's case, and we're not specific, spe speaking specifically about the case, but you explained to me that the judges rotate. It's not something that has anything to do with <laughs> somebody running right. the governor. <laughs> right. No. So, no, definitely not that. And I believe I looked him up after you and I talked about it, but I can't remember if he was just rotated out or if he had retired. But that that happens is they'll they'll take the, in a circuit, they'll take the criminal judges and rotate them into civil and the civil judges into criminal, which makes everything a headache. But it could be that he had just been in that division long enough. It was time for him to be rotated out to another one yeah. or he, or he straight up retired. The only time. Yeah. Um, I mean, w recently, if, if anybody's following or trying to follow, follow the young thug case out of uh, Atlanta, that judge did get himself recused from the bench, but that was due to his bad behavior. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and and then I saw too that Cacciatore, the ASA, he came into the picture later on around the time that Bankowitz had come in. And I was like, that's, he wasn't on all the other documents before Bankowitz. That's not unusual, though, because people come and go from the prosecutor's office like any other job. And the same thing goes like with any other job. They they get promoted. So a prosecutor may start out in misdemeanors and then get start getting bumped up until they're actually in like high felony criminal cases. Right. There's a hierarchy to it. And the more experience you have, like you'll find the brand new ones sitting in traffic court all day long. Um. It, it could just be somebody left and he picked up that person's caseload. It could be any number of factors. I wouldn't read anything specific to Sarah into any of what I've seen on, on her case. Okay. All right. So you personally know Billy Lane? I do. He's a very good investigator. He's former law enforcement. Um, he gets really good outcomes. He pays very close attention to detail works very well with his attorneys. Um, and yeah, I think he does a great job. You said he was a super nice guy. I think you told me that one time. Yeah, yeah. Which is good to know. 
Yeah, he's really nice. And he's he's been with Sarah since day one. I mean, I know he came off of it for a while and was asked to come back. And I know there's been some back and forth based on what I've seen on the docket. Um, but he, he was there um, after Mauricio Padilla took the case. I'm going through some of our questions here. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> Explain to me. Now, it, so in a situation where you have a defendant who likes to write the judge letters mm. uh, prior to being her own, her own counsel, how does that work? The judge is going to eventually read it, but he's not, he's, he's got to disclose it to everybody in the case, right? Yeah. Well, so I was kind of making notes on my phone about this this morning while I was sitting in the Chick-fil-A drive through because I had listened to one of your, um, I'd listened to one of your episodes and, um, so yeah, uh, you have to think about this, right? Judges see hundreds of people in a year and a lot of them decide they're going to write letters. But the thing is the letters are not, I think the judge, I can't pronounce his name. What is it in Sarah's name? Cranick, thank you. I think he said it in in something I was listening to, which is that's considered ex parte communication. If the, if a party is writing a letter to the judge, so it would be the same thing as like if the prosecution were trying to communicate with the judge outside of the presence of the defense, and that's what got that uh, Judge Glanville in Atlanta in so much trouble. Right? It was this ex parte communication he was having at the state. So. Sarah's letters, they're going to be received and opened by the clerk of courts. Uh, you see that stamped usually somewhere. That's why they always scan in the envelope and they add all, you know, all you get all the stuff. And then um, it's up to the clerk to, to file it. I know some judges that will take absolutely no notice of it whatsoever. It appears as though Sarah's judge had been reading because he was matching her point for point when he came out with his order. Mm -hmm. he's so good i love him i do too i think he's the perfect judge to handle her and to to handle all her nonsense and um yeah so you get them all the time too from from people who have already been convicted they're trying to write to the judge asking for you know different things to happen that's not actionable it cannot be done that is not a legal filing that's not a motion that's not anything you can't just make stuff up right and expect that the court is going to act on it it just doesn't work that way i had to i had a lady one time ask me if i couldn't just call the judge and i was like i'm sorry excuse me what <laughs> well does it what was it i can't remember it was like a little bit about a couple months ago sarah made some kind of comment about them all meeting in the break room and to talk or in his office she, she didn't yeah his chambers yeah. in his office <laughs> <laughs> right. And the, she referenced a copy machine that was in her wanted ad that she included. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So the judge has chambers and that'll be his inner office. And then I've not seen where the judges are in that particular courthouse, but then there'll be like an antechamber where his J.A. or judicial assistant is. He'll also have a clerk. You know, everything's kind of behind the scenes. So, but no, the, the state should not be gathering in a break room with the judge. That, to my knowledge, does not happen. The state, the pro I refer to it as the state, some, because um, here they're assistant state, assistant state attorneys yeah. or, or the state's attorney, right? Other, like if you watch uh, Law and Order, that's a district attorney. So I just call them the state here. But the state's offices are usually located near the courthouse, but not in the courthouse necessarily and so no there would not be a lot of commingling chatting about wanted ads by the coffee machine <laughs> and the water cooler and the water cooler <laughs> exactly uh so i guess what do you think is the biggest misconception when it comes to people that look you know that are, somebody like me who has only been watching trials for about a year or two and some and somebody who is like really used to be into law and order and all those TV shows. What's oh. the difference between reality and TV, I guess? Uh, 
There's a few. Um, one is that an investigation will wrap up, you know, in the first 15 minutes. I mean, for a show, right? They're trying to say it's like over the course of a couple of days. I'm thinking of Law and Order, I guess, more than any other or, or SVU. Um, because TV hasn't been good for a while. So no, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm watching all these trials on YouTube. Um, yeah, so time for one, time is a really big factor. Um, and then the the next part that I think is a really big mi misconception is what evidence and testimony is allowed in at trial. Because the answer is no. <laughs> No, 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 no. You don't get to ask those questions. You don't get to bring that in. You don't get to say those words. Um, so a lot of people just do not have any sense of what is the, the legal structure behind everything because television, just like a medical procedural, will drive a doctor crazy because that's not how it works. It's the same thing in the legal system. There are steps and rules and law to be followed, procedure at every level. So I think those are two of the biggest misconceptions. Oh my God, can you imagine I'm trying to get Sarah's trial into a 45 minute TV show? It is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. I just, I just got, uh, while we were on the phone, I just got my email back from the Orange County, which one is this from? Orange County Sheriff's Office. Do you want to look at this with me or do you? Yeah, call? sure. Absolutely. Can you bring, how do I see it? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to pull it up on the screen. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. I don't I have this. I've never looked at this before, so I have no idea what we're going to be looking at here. Okay. So let me share this. Oh, it's a zip file. I got to download it. Body worn camera. Is that all I asked for? I asked for. All 911 calls. Let me see what I asked for. That's body worn camera. It says body worn camera for 6 18 19 has meat retention and is no longer available. Yeah, but I already had that one anyway. I think that's okay. why the file size is so small. Oh, that sucks. But that's all that they've, they've, they've put in here. I asked for, let me tell you what I asked for. Any and all redacted non. Any and all unredacted 911 calls requesting assistance to the address from January the 2nd, 2017 through March 1st of 2020. And any and all body-worn camera recordings for the following arrests. And I put down the three arrests that I did not have body-worn camera footage from. So, let's see. Well, you can I'm try so downloading it and see what it, what it actually is. Um, I primarily use Mac computers, but I use the VLC to watch and listen to just about everything law enforcement sends me or okay. provides us. A lot of times in Discovery, what happens is they will send us a specific media player, just like they do with the Cellbrite extractions. They send us the program that allows you, it's called a reader. So you can't make any changes to what you're looking at, but it allows you to look at it, if that makes any sense. Okay. Yeah, these are both from 725-218, which we've already seen. Mm. I think... Yeah, this is the one I've already seen. Okay, yeah, 725-2018. There were a number of calls, I think, right? Yeah, well, we know there was one on in 2000, June of 2018. Then there was another one, I think, in July of 2019. There might have been other calls, though, that I wanted, and I don't, I didn't get them. So I think this is all just... But this looks to be a little bit more than what I've seen. So do you want to watch it? Sure. Yeah. Let it play. Let me know if you can't hear it. I think at first there's no sound on it. Yeah, that's usually true. I'm going to just put it up full screen and take our sure. little icons off so that we can see it better. I can't hear her. Can you hear anything? Mm -mm. And I got the sound on. 
I want to say that this one though did they didn't turn the sound on right away that it was a few minutes before she you could hear her together for a year and a half and she's going through a whole bunch of shit. pardon me for saying that no 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 go ahead and... uh, pardon me for saying that but like oh man uh he let loose on my ass tonight and i did not i'm not having it okay right. i got kicked no. in the face okay mm -hmm. kicked in the face that you know of, there's no guns, no, anything in there. Okay. No, ma'am, no. I know, baby. You guys are doing your job. All right, no, Sarah I... here? Yes. Sarah here? Go get him. Go get him. <laughs> I swear to God, there's nothing for you guys to be afraid of. Okay. What's his name? George. George, all right. There's Sounded like she... Like, don't worry, he's not dangerous type thing is what she was yeah, saying. Yeah, she said God, nothing to be afraid, afraid of. I'm And I'm done with it. I have to go to work tomorrow. What's up, George? Hey, what's up, you want to talk to us? Go yeah. inside. Talk to you inside. Okay. Then let's get to the next one. No, wait. No, this is still playing. Come on, man. You see my eye. I do see your eye. Okay, tell me how it all went down from beginning to. Here's my love. Okay. Okay, so. My love. We were having a really good day, and we mm -hmm. went across the street to Muldoon's. Mm -hmm. and good day. Everything was good and fine and dandy, and this guy talked to another guy because he left, came in there, and I got so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad, because I asked for a cigarette from another guy because he took my license my debit card mm -hmm. and everything cigarettes everything took everything took everything okay so i asked i asked someone for a cigarette mm -hmm. and it happened to be a guy so he walked in and got super pissed because i asked for a cigarette from another guy i came home mind you my car is across the street still okay So you get home, you go inside. Oh man, let loose. Mm -mm. Okay, elaborate. So you open the door, what happens from there? I'm a whore. He starts calling you names? Mm. Okay. Mm. When I say ragdoll, do you know what that is? I don't know what a ragdoll is. Oh man, I was ragdolled. Okay, but I need, and I need you. In the face. Okay, I need you to elaborate. Like, you walk into the house. Did you start arguing? He started calling you names. He said he was No, I, I walked out, I walked in and I walked to the back. I just wanted mm -hmm. to smoke a cigarette and just go to sleep. I just literally wanted to just, I'm gonna smoke a cigarette, I'm gonna go to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you're making your way to the oh, back, what happened? Oh, I got caught on the stairwell. You got caught on the stairwell, so he caught you on the stairwell. And what, did he get in front of you? Started confronting you, telling you anything? What happened? Um, let me figure out my lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, okay. I don't think Elaborate. anything specific happened. Well, this is the one where he kicked her. He had scratches on his neck. And oh. she had a black eye because he had kicked her because she was pulling on him on the staircase or something. Right. I have no doubt they fought. But I, I sort of doubt that it was entirely on him. I don't know. We've, at least for me, I've seen a lot less footage of George than I have of Sarah. Yeah, and he seems so cooperative with the police, you know. Which mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, that doesn't really say a whole lot, but it does say something. He's not like irate, like you'd see some people. That mm -hmm. bitch is doing this and that. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. Hey, Sarah, I need you to tell me exactly what happened so I can help you. My heart is like, I don't want him to get in trouble, but. Fuck, I'm tired of being beaten up. Okay. I understand I'm trying to help you out, but I, I know need you to, are. I know you are. I need you to elaborate a little bit. So, I swear in the to God, stairwell, dragging me down the stairs. Dragging. I went upstairs, mm -hmm. tried to get in the bed. I just wanted to go to sleep. I just wanted to go to sleep. I just wanted to go to sleep. I didn't make it to the bed. I didn't make it to the bed. He caught me in the upstairs. 
Like shit. in the hallway? Beating the fuck up. That's all I can say. Okay, what do you mean? Like, I see your eye. What, you said yes, he kicked you in the eye. That's what this is. That's what this fought. Were you on the floor when he kicked you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, how did you get to the floor? <laughs> did he push you? Did he pull you? How? Normally what I do is, because he does it so often, I just go to the floor. I just go to the floor. So I'm pretty sure I don't really recollect. I went to the ground. I went to the ground. Okay, and then that's I'm when so he... I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. No, I'm no, in front of you. that's fine. I don't mind. So you went down to the ground. Yes, that's what I do. Did he... He kicked you with which... Do you recall which foot? Right. Right foot, okay. Heel. Mm -hmm. His heel. Okay. And you say you've been together for... I'm a for, whore. I mean, because I asked for a cigarette. Because he left my ass in my cars across the street. Okay. And you said you've been together for about a year? And a half. A year and a half. Yes. Okay. Live together, obviously. Yes. Okay. All I right. just recently went for a divorce. He's mm -hmm. been there with me. He knows all the story. Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. But... <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just trying to... This it's, sucks! And I have to go to work tomorrow! Do you want the fire department to come out check no, your eyes? No, Okay. Okay. Do you want to press charges? You can smoke your cigarette if you want. Can I talk to you, though? You're talking to me by myself. I don't want him to be taken out. Please put the fear of the police in charge. So you don't want to press charges? Okay. Do you want to fill out any paperwork? Do a statement? No? Okay. Can you pause it here for a second? Yeah. So, obviously she's in a different county than, than where I am. But here, if you call on a domestic, they don't give you the option of who wants to press charges. Somebody is going to jail that day. Period. End of story. It could be oh. both. Could be one. But somebody is going. You you don't get the option of not pressing charges. And I've seen that's another big misconception because a lot of baby mamas will get very angry at baby daddies. So they will call in a domestic on him and not realize they just wrecked his life. And they can't and take it back. And he can't work. And he can't work and he can't get a job and all this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And they want to walk it back. And the state's like, mm -mm. because it's not it's not up to the person. The state brings charges. The, st the state is the one with the power, right? The police can make an arrest and they can say for this purpose, or they're charging you with this, but it's ultimately the state. So, you know, when Sarah went into court and she was arguing back and forth with that uh, deputy who came in to say that she should not be allowed freedom in the courtroom. Yeah. And she was saying, okay, but I wasn't charged, but I wasn't charged over and over and over again she wasn't adjudicated she was charged the charge still exists the state chose to drop it or no no process but that doesn't mean it didn't happen there was still an arrest she was still booked the charges were filed into the court and the state chose to drop it so, so she was wrong they, it wasn't expunged from her record so to speak no and i don't you can expunge things but I don't believe domestic violence is one of them. There's a list uh, in the Florida statute, and it's a one-time only thing. So it's like a one-time only get out of jail card, and it's not easy to get. Um, and I'm not sure on a domestic violence that that would actually, she would actually be able to do that. But when she kept arguing with him, she just didn't understand her, she doesn't understand the terminology, you know. You know, I always wondered why he didn't say anything. He he refused to say that. She, well, not take that back. He didn't until the end, the last two arrests, where he said she hits me and I don't want to report her to the police. I think he didn't want to report her to the police because of her son and losing custody of him. That she, could be. And she was, if she's truthful about working. Yeah, you know, he realizes what it's good. He realizes what it could do to her life. 
Yeah. I mean, it's possible. Like I said, I don't, I don't, I've seen much more of her obviously on, you know, the different coverage than I have of him, but she certainly appears as though she could be aggressive. Let's see if we can't, there's four videos here. So sure, maybe keep going. I just wanted to make that comment while I was thinking about it. Oh no, that's okay. I just, I was thinking, you know, I'm hoping that if there's some footage of him that we have not seen, because I wanted to see what he said. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? Oh, God, he's fine. Oh, God. I know. You guys have actually been out here twice now. <laughs> Look at this shit. Look at my shit all the Did this happen today? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, I see it. It's ripped and I'm down there a little bit. I just bought this yesterday. I did it. Sit down. Smoke your cigarette. Do you think no, 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 aggressive? Okay. Do you have an ID with you? Mm -hmm. Is it in the house? Yeah. Okay, we'll go find out. I know later. my number if you want it. Oh, that's perfect. Go for it. B eight seven zero dash zero. Eight seven zero dash zero. Zero. Okay. First I, name is spelled S A R A H. Do you have a middle name? Catherine. K A T H R Y N. K A T H R Y N. R Y N. Is she like trying to touch the officer right now? They said that. They said that about her. The apartment manager said that yeah, she's very I was, touchy. I heard that this morning in something I was listening to. Yeah, it's like she's she is very close to that to that officer. And the and the other video cam that we have of the other arrest, she wanted. She said, "Can I hug you?" Oh, okay. But yeah, she's one of those that when she talks to you, she has to kind of get in there. And I feel like if she does that when she's not, a, you know, mad, imagine what she does when she's mad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your last name? Boone. B-O-O-N-E. I see it at birth. 10, 10, 7, 7. I get it. I get it. Just make sure not to squeeze my arm anymore. Do you have a telephone number? 407. 407. 716. 716. 8684. 8684. Yes. Email address? Uh, SKP. SKP. Underscore. 1 800. 1 800. At Yahoo.com. At Yahoo.com. Sorry. No, that's cool. I get it. I get it. Sit down, smoke your cigarette, try to relax a little bit. I'm going to take pictures of you in a little bit. All right. Thank you. No problem. Okay, there's another video coming up here. Mm -hmm. I'm whichever the other video. This may be the other officer. That's probably what it is. This one is eight minutes long. Maybe it's the conversation with George. They have him inside. Maybe it is. This is the, so it looked like there were three officers, right? Mm -hmm. It looks like it. Yeah, the, okay, so this is the other officer's point of view, all right. George, talk to us. Talk to you in time. They've redacted it. Maybe they'll show it in court. Is that maybe that's how it works? It's possible. I don't really get a lot of domestics, although I I'm aware that um, it's often redacted or unavailable even through public records request and even to attorneys if they're not the attorney on the case. I just think it's so weird how on all of these, because this technically this arrest that I requested is under his name, but yet everything he says is redacted and everything she says is not on all these um, pictures. 
Yeah, I'm not sure why that would be. It could be because it's going to be used as evidence in a trial. Yeah, they redacted out like the whole conversation because this is like um, several minutes worth. Mm -hmm. But it might maybe it might because be he was the victim. <gasps> oh well, this is the one where they arrested both of them. But because you mean he, he's a, okay, I, I see what you're saying. There's five videos total. And it looks like this one is very much redacted as well. Hmm. The other thing I noticed her saying in court um, when she was arguing with the judge was that her case was an open and ongoing investigation. And that's not true either. The investigation is closed by arrest. Oh, is it? Uh-huh. You see that on the police report. It'll If you look at the top of a narrative... I haven't seen hers. I guess I could pull it and look, or you could send it to me and I'll look at it. But an investigation. You mean in this, this particular instance, not in his death? No, in his death. The investigation is closed, period, oh. in the story. She kept trying to say her case was an open and active one. No, it's not open and active. The case, as far as the police go, that's been cleared by arrest. The state has charged her. Now it's up to a jury to determine whether she's guilty or innocent. There's no open, ongoing, active investigation here. Oh, I got you. Okay. This is all going to be the same footage we've already seen. So I will say this, though. This form that I requested, it could be that they're getting the all the documents door? together for me. Uh, when it comes to have a seat, we'll talk. I think that there is a lot of people requesting stuff right now. When it comes right to domestic-related stuff, man, yeah. um, you'll, you'll probably sit in there for a day, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to lie to you, all right? You're going to probably sit in there for a day, maybe two, all right? What two Possibly. It's all up to the judge, all right? This is the thing is that the reason why they do that, man, is because when it's domestic-related, all right, y'all are dating. This is still dating violence, still domestic violence, yeah. okay? They got to make sure they keep y'all separated long enough to where nobody's gonna come mm -hmm. home and kill each other you know i, I know that, that might not be your, that might not be your intention that's the majority of the, the majority of the uh, domestic violence and dating violence uh battery calls that we deal with that's that never happens but there's always that one out of many that will do it so that's mm -hmm. why they're gonna you'll probably sit in jail for maybe a day or two okay all right you understand that yes sir all right just keep being cooperative all right yes sir all right so you want your phone you want your phone yes Make sure, you, make sure you guys lock the back door. Man. We we got you. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. You, you go by Junior, you go by George. Uh, George. Is it George or is it Jorge? Jorge. 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 All right. George. George. Hey, hey, man, I'll call you by your name. Well, you, want, you want George. Okay, I'll call you George. Thank you. All right, welcome. He seems so respectful. Yeah. Not belligerent. I At mean, all. I'm not saying he, he doesn't get angry. I don't know. I can't make that kind of a assessment, but... He certainly seems calm. Yeah, he's he's. It's just not something you would normally see in a domestic. No, I mean there are definitely. This is a rather calm one. She, she's way more agitated than he is, but I don't have any baseline for for him. Yeah, that's the problem. I think this is where they are, put her in cuffs. She can't be happy about that. Fucking taking a few other pictures. Can you name me? Yeah, yeah, just stand up for me. Face my car that way. The car is that way. Hands behind your back. For oh, what? For battery domestic? Me? Both of you. Battery domestic violence, you two hitting each other. Oh. Doesn't go down like that. All right. She didn't deny it. Walk towards that car. No, she sure didn't. County 125. All the neighbors are looking out going, yes. <laughs> Night of quiet. Female secured. 
You don't have anything that's going to poke me, stick me, cut no. me. Okay. Put your chest on that flag and stay there for me. Is this for real? This is for real. Why? I already explained to you. Chest on flag. Gives her another excuse to not have a job and sit on the drink now. Probably not be together, but that's mm -hmm. not my business. Okay. So, stuff like this happens, yeah. and I have to step in. Why am I in trouble? Spread though? your feet. Spread your feet apart. Why am I in trouble though? Because of Why the marks he has all on his neck and the inconsistencies that's of the story. That's me fighting back. Okay. I can't. Okay, step back a little bit. I love how Kranick has picked up on how she always likes to play the victim. Mm hmm Good. And he's so professional about it. I gotta check you though. Yeah, he is. Why? Because I- I love that he matches her point No, because everybody that goes in my car gets checked. And you notice how when he matches her point to point, he's like, he does some of the stuff, he doesn't even have to look at the computer. He's like, no, let me tell you. Right. The best part though, is you know how she likes to count her days, minutes, hours, months, years, whatever. And he- did that in his order he mirrored her language back to her which i thought was brilliant he's a smart guy when mm -hmm. we get done with this i want to play that one portion that i just read from her ims okay and we'll talk about it no, matter who no, you no, are no, 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 no. i mean like seriously like i literally just started my job a week ago okay. go ahead and sit down for me sarah God, can you imagine him the world? Oh, okay, she would be a pain phone. in the ass to work with. Her phone's mm -hmm. over there? It's in your front seat. Okay. Thank you. She's the type of person that would get other people fired constantly. Seems like she might be. It, she is just... Ugh. I bet she had very few lady friends. Yeah, I, I wonder how she does in that dorm. Um, it might, must not be too bad or she wouldn't be complaining so much about her attorneys and stopping her case from moving forward. I always wonder that too. Like, do they, when she's around, do they act like they're her friend? And when she's not around, they're like, oh my gosh, she's such an idiot. Well, she's in an open room an open dorm, 652 women, I believe are housed there. Mm -hmm. And the way that it's set up is so that the guards, the bailiffs, the sheriff's deputies, excuse me, that they all have the correction officers that they have eyes on the inmates all the time. So there's like no partitions. There's no like smaller pods. There's no cells. There's it's from what I understand, it's just a big open dorm. Like the orange is the new black. Yeah. And and you heard what she said about having her files sitting between her and the other girl's bunk just out in the open at that one point. Yeah, I did hear that and um, heard about how it was also a fire issue and everything. I was trying to envision that. And frankly, I don't know how far apart the bunks are, or, you know, if they're a top and a bottom. I, I just I don't know. It's hard to speculate on that. But, you know, she she argued for one thing she got it she didn't like that so she got the next thing and it still wasn't right i mean it's just you know she'll keep finding excuse after excuse i don't think many people are like oh she's doing it to extend her time or whatever i i don't everybody acts like she's so smart that she's got this figured out you know she's 10 steps ahead of everybody else i don't think that's the case i think she just i think she's scared of what's next maybe i don't what it is. I mean, there's so much uncertainty in a jury trial, even if you are not a lawyer and you're not a defendant and, you know, you're not part of a victim's family or just maybe somewhere on the team or you're invested in it. I mean, I've watched trials on YouTube where I'm invested in what that verdict is. And that's that time between when the jury goes out and when a verdict comes back in is nerve wracking. and then. There's the time between, if there is a time between the verdict coming in and the judge 
sentencing. And I just think that the, she's been, how many years has she been in county jail? Four years, uh, February, 2020. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. the end of February, it was the end of February, 2020. Okay. So she's, she's comfortable there. That is the devil she knows. Yeah. That's she does not, it. she does not know, nor do I thank goodness what Florida state prison looks like. And I'm sure it's a lot worse than everybody always yeah. says that they, that people well, want to stay in jail before they don't want to go to prison. They want to stay in jail. Well, there's reason, there's a couple of different reasons for that. I think, um, one is usually in the County jail. They're not far from their people. So there may be other people in jail that they know it happens a lot, even co-defendants, um, even clients I have know each other. It's the craziest thing. Um, so county keeps you close to home, and so people can go into the jail. They can put money on the kiosk. You can't visit in person in a jail, um, at least not to my knowledge, not to anyone that I've ever been in. Family and friends cannot. I can. Attorneys can. Law enforcement can. But not friends and family. Prisons are set up for long-term housing. So there's a there will definitely be a hierarchy there i think some of the television and movies about that are probably true um but there's also depending on where you end up there's different programs education different things that that they can do to sort of have a life whereas in county jail you might get a duty like cleaning floors or something small like that but there's nothing all that much to do so but it's safe even though it's, it, you know, it's, it's jail, it's safe. It's what she knows. That's the way I would think about it is, oh my God, if I go to trial and they find me guilty, what does that look like? But if she gets out of jail, she doesn't have anywhere to go either. Yeah. I think everybody's, <clears throat> everybody says that Brian's done with her. The thing is, is all that domestic stuff is, re is, un is redacted in her proceedings with him yeah, yeah divorce. I, I think i mean i don't know if there's some kind of battle going on i don't see how there could be a whole lot of battle going on he's probably just waiting for her to be found guilty so that he can get full custody of the son i don't want yeah to i mean there's no way there's no way of knowing because that will be completely locked down and not released to anybody um but they are definitely the court the family courts would be looking at what's the best interest of the child. And it could go from anywhere to like, like you're talking about like permanent custody to um, actually removing her parental rights, which is, you know, the most extreme op option that can be taken for a parent. I saw a file about her visitations, video visitations. And the, I think they went up through December of 2023 and it looked like Brian had visited twice and one time he had brought the son in. But it was, again, it was a video. It was probably, you know, FaceTime or Zoom or something like that. Well, However, they No, that's how it works. That's okay. that's just how it is. So if you got in your car today and you drove to the county jail where she is, you wouldn't even be in the same building as her. Right. You go to a, an area that is full of like video telephones. And. They get on a video telephone from where they're located and that's how you talk to them and it's recorded. So you couldn't, so they're not calling from home. They're do they have to come. They to the can building? now since COVID since yeah. COVID they can now that now that's available. It costs money though. And there's a limited amount of time, but um, at the jail that I frequent, which I can't believe I say that I'm saying that, but the jail I frequent, you come in and you go into a, if you're, if you're not there for a professional visit, so anybody who's got a friend or family that they're wanting to talk to, they go into a room and they sit down in a cubicle and the person that they're there to visit comes up on the screen. It's video to video and it's recorded. It's free if they go to do it jail. It's not free if they do it from home. I got you. Okay. I wouldn't want to take a kid into the jail, though, so. No, I wouldn't either. But maybe he was, you know, curious and, and 
Brian thought he should see for himself. I, I, I honestly don't know. I feel bad for him. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to play. There's no sound in this right away. This is from the other perspective. Oh, okay. Because I was like, isn't that her sitting? I think she has dogs too. What happens to the dogs? I know. I hope. I hope Brian took them. I, they're really cute. But what she'd made, I did notice in her thing, one's deaf and one's blind. Oh gosh. Hopefully, a rescue group came in and took them, or or they were able to find them a good home. Mm. Redacted. So they've redacted the inside of the house. That's the second time they've done that. As soon as they open the door, they redact it. And that's where George is. So we know we're going to see that in court then. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, un okay. So unless the defense can put forward a motion in Lemony to keep it out, there has to be a good reason, a good argument, a legal argument to stand on that says, Your Honor, this is our argument why this footage should not be shown. It's highly prejudicial. It will be more prejudicial than probative to the jury. Therefore, we don't want it in. So there'll be a written motion argument. And then the state will give the reasons why. And the judge will determine whether or not something is coming in. There's a lot of negotiation that people do not know happens before and behind a jury's, like before a jury is ever sworn and behind a jury's back. There will be so much information, so much argument. They they don't see half the pictures. They don't see they don't see so much that it it really does become very, very narrow. And and so people think that they know everything about a case. Well, no, you know what was released by a public record, which in Florida is pretty broad, but um and what you see at a trial, but even in a trial, in, in a courtroom, when they put things up on the screens, there are no screens for the gallery. So you're not getting to see uh, crime scene photos or, or the autopsy photos. The screens are, are for the jury, the judge, and the lawyers, and the defense, the defendant at the tables. They're not, it's not like on an airplane, you know, how you have screen and screen and screen. It's not yeah. like that. They don't put that evidence out there for everyone to see. Well... And, you know, I'm going to show you something. I did find this on. We'll start with this one. So this is the this is what the judge's chambers looked like. OK, that would be an ante room, like a waiting area. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where the J. Uh, well, in my experience, that's where the J.A. would sit. J.A. Judicial J. assistant. Oh. So, that's not his chambers? No. Mm -mm. That would be... That would be... Um, to me, that looks like a... It looks like an anteroom, antechamber. So, like, the room before the chambers. Yeah. He, his would be... Like, a judge's chambers wouldn't have that much seating available in it oh i get you. at least yeah. not not in my experience um but the that that area where you saw the um the fax machine the copier all the things right and the all the screens to me that looks like where his judicial assistant would sit and and she's she or he um they are your if you are working in the defense they are your communication with the court so uh, for example, if you are trying to coordinate a court date and the state has to be involved in that, and maybe there's another defense attorney, you can contact the JA and say, can you please tell me when court's next available time is, or when is their next, you know, hearing calendar, calendar call, whatever they different. It's so annoying because in the state of Florida, nothing is Co cohesive all the way through that's not the right word but nothing is the same all the way through every circuit 
is different. And, and that just drives me insane. So you, you have the process of like looking at the Orange County docket, right? But if you look at Seminole County, it's not going to look anything like the Orange County one is unless they're using the same system, which is rare. But the judicial assistant is, is sort of the judge's lifeline in his, in his chambers. Like that's his person. And then in the courtroom, he's got a clerk. All right, let me show you this really quick. You were mentioning the courtroom, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here you have the jury, jury box. And I noticed this huge screen right here. Mm -hmm. Judge. Judge's assistant clerk. And then you've got prosecute. Well, wouldn't it be prosecution would be over here closer to the jury, but they've got her sitting over here now and the, the prosecution. But I guess right now it doesn't matter for hearings. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, let me think. So in my most recent trial, the state was closest to the jury. I could barely see them from the defense table. We were in a much, much bigger courtroom. This one looks really small. So it may not be that the, the trial may not be held in this room. It's possible they switch to a different courtroom. So for my recent trial, when they, when we picked a jury, they called 75 people. So we were in the one of the biggest courtrooms in the courthouse just for that day to pick the jury. And then we went to a smaller courtroom. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. This looks like there's only like three rows in the gallery. Yeah, so, room. yeah, exactly. And those are not comfortable. And normally, so let's say you have your prosecution is my right, their left, I guess, right? From, from what we've seen in hearings, that'll be the bailiffs, like the main bailiffs desk right there where your pointer is. Yeah. And then the, that'll be the clerk on continuing to the right there. Uh -huh. And then um, judge. Okay. Yeah. And so this might be a tech person. It could be uh, an assistant clerk, a research attorney. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I would be surprised. I've never seen a screen like that facing the gallery ever. Well, since they've started doing. Oh, the, the Zoom courts. Oh, yes. Yes, it's you're all exactly open now. right. That's where Christian Lake was. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. I'm thinking there's no way they're letting a jury see the, see all of that. Yeah. <laughs> but but to me, I look at it from the jury, the jury standpoint, it's probably harder for the jury to see the, the maybe not, but right. Because so this may not be like a, a murder trial kind of situation. Yeah. This this might not be the the courtroom that they use. I don't know. I can't sometimes, say for certain. Sometimes they'll bring in another, like a, a mobile TV and they'll put it like in the middle so they can mm -hmm. look at it and whatnot. But yeah, I'm assuming that there's going to be stuff that, well, now yeah. the way it's set up, they just tell them, don't, you know, turn the cameras off for this portion or what have you. Right. The but, gallery can still see it. But it, yeah, but in a jury trial, like in a trial where you're going to have potentially disturbing evidence um it's there's not enough tech going on in that courtroom in my opinion i mean i see the big projector and the and the camera um but what i well there's the elmo do you remember those from like in school the the yeah they would project that's what they use to put evidence up on the screen but i'm not i i, I don't know like like i said at, at my last trial and it, in fact, at every recent trial I've had, there is tech at the tables. So that's for putting on, you know, the counsel will stand there and maybe they're putting on evidence. But at the at the tables, like the defense table and the, and the prosecution table, there are normally screens so that the defendant can see. See how there's a microphone there? Yeah. So it could be that it's wired underneath for it. Some of these courtrooms are not and some are. This looks like a more modern one and the microphone and then they'll bring out headsets. Oh, there's a yeah. They'll bring out headsets. Not quite like that, but that's but, for that's for translation, I think. Yeah, that's probably for the court reporter. But um, so that the the defendants can hear when the attorneys have to go to sidebar, they bring out headsets to put on the defendant's so they can hear what's being said. Well, let me take you back over here to this one. 
This is the holding cell at the courthouse. Oh yeah, that's not pleasant. <laughs> Disgusting. It's that's awful. Look and at the they, floor. Oh my god. Can you imagine what that smells like? Here's the awful part. Um, and I know I don't know if it was if it was your oh god. Oh gross. Oh really? <laughs> Oh you know, God. you wonder why the video is not taken from above. I think it's because of the Lord. toilet. Oof. They so get, they get what happens happen. is they are in one video. She says she was kicked awake at three o'clock in the morning. That's probably true. They wake them up at some ungodly hour because they've got to find everybody that's going to court. They have to shackle them ankles and wrists. They have to get them on transport vans and they have to transport them to the courthouse. And then they've got to get them to the different. Uh, holding rooms for the different courtrooms. It's a process. It takes a lot of personnel to get that done. Um, and they also are supposed to try to keep co-defendants away from each other, which does not always happen, which can lead to problems. I can imagine. But they're cuffed and shackled back there. They're not free. So can you imagine sitting back there for hours? I bet she's freezing our little paduka off. Yeah, Ugh. it's either really hot or really cold. That's what it. Yeah, it just. I look at this and I just think cold, cold. Mm -hmm. The court, right, courtrooms usually are freezing. So is the jail. So the other video I had was I wanted to show you the jury deliberation room. So they'll have their own bathrooms, at least one, if not two. That's what, that looks like the, what that is over there to the left, maybe? Yeah, I would agree with you. I don't know what those doors are. I don't know. That I really don't know. Maybe it's got some video equipment in there, but they've got but, uh, their board, their white. Oh, board you know what? It might be where they have like a kitchens type setup. Like, um, oh, okay. Maybe, coffee. I don't know, like maybe, yeah, maybe coffee, snacks, water, that sort of thing. That would make sense. Okay. Um, And that one back there, that might be like writing supplies. I I have not been on a jury. I, I am never, I can't, the last time I was called for jury duty, I had a trial starting in the next courtroom the same day. Oh, you got out of it. Yeah, I said you might want to try for civil next time because I don't think you're going to put me on a criminal jury. I've I've been called twice and I've never gotten on there. Well, I wanted to, I guess, well, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to ask you. We've actually gone through this a lot quicker than I thought we would, but I know you and I could sit here and talk for hours about this. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about the fact that there's an attorney now? Yeah, let's do that. Let me pull up this, the docket. I just did that. So just to give everybody a context, you and I were supposed to record at 10 o'clock and I put down 10 o'clock my time. The, I didn't realize the time difference. I was not thinking. My brain is not here. I wasn't either. So you were ready to go live and I was reading. I was just finishing up my editing because I had woken up. At seven to get ready for this recording, which is eight o'clock your time. And I was editing when you called me or when we started texting and I was like, oh, crap. She's an hour That's when it hit me because you said I'm in the room. And I was thinking, why are you already in there? <laughs> and I thought it was I thought I was getting in there late. <laughs> so what what we what we found today was what I recorded today was the IMS report. We'll go back to that. Let's let's first look at this defense motion to continue. Right. Yeah, I read this before before we came on. I mean, the way he's put this together, he's been he's met with her the twentieth, the twenty first. It looks like you know we were talking about him being in Pensacola area. Yeah, he stayed over, right? Yeah, he had to have stayed over because that's a haul. Look, the twentieth. Let's look at the dates of the twentieth. The twentieth. That would have been a Tuesday. Tuesday and Wednesday, the 26th and 27th was a Monday, this past Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. He's staying, so, he's staying over. Um, and I imagine those meetings were not short. 
Well, if you if we look into her IMS reports, which I guess I can. Oh, that, that might tell you. Yeah, exactly. I'm usually in the meeting, so I can tell you how long they are. <laughs> mm. I didn't leave the jail until after six o'clock the other day. Oh, I couldn't do what you do. Could not do what you do. All right. So the 20th. Right here, it says. Oh, they had a discussion with her because she was acting out. Did you hear about this? Regarding several she's, matters. She's being a oh. little biatch. Okay. Yeah, zoom that in. It says, inmate Boone, who was incarcerated since 2020, is already well acquainted in, with the established procedures and confirmed her understanding of them. She she's okay, just, so she was trying to... She was trying to go around the chain of command. Exactly. Like she's trying to play. Yeah, exactly. This she, is what she does. She was trying to skip the housing officer or ship supervisor and go to legal counsel and captain. So those were the people that were on the call that other day when um, they read out all the conditions of everything. Is already well acquainted with the established procedures. Yes, she is. And confirmed her understanding of them. She gets straight A's. Inmate Boone expressed a desire to have a tablet available for her use throughout the day. You had asked me about tablets in the jail. So as far as I know, because I've never seen one, I'm on that, I'm on a different side of the jail now. Now that they've closed a jail in my county, I used to have to go into to pods and that was horrible and I hated it. And they'd be like, ma'am, you have to sit with your back to the glass. Okay, thank you. That's enough information for me. <laughs> um, so the tablets, it's not like each person gets an iPad, right? It's a basic tablet with some basic things on it. And I've, I've, I'm thrilled that they've got it because you can kind of use it like text messaging, although it's not going to be as instantaneous because they have to review it, right? Somebody's got it or else AI is reviewing the content of it. So, and it get kind of gets to my understanding from my clients, it kind of gets passed around. Like you don't get to have it in your possession the entire day. And it looks like to me, that's what she's asking for. Now, the other cool thing about the tablet that I like on my end is that it'll take up to 5,000 characters, which means you can write a rather lengthy email if you need to. I've also seen on the JPay system, which is what Florida Prison uses, um, they can do photos and videos. Of course, that'll have to be reviewed. And then I think in the county jails, you can do photos, but those also have to be reviewed. So with most of my clients, I'll send them a message like, if I have told them, for example, I'm coming on Wednesday and I'm like, I'm not doing the jail Wednesday, then I will send them a message. I'm coming. It's not going to be Wednesday. Or I'll ask them if they have completed something I asked them to do and tell them that I'm coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they can also ask for um, if, if for some reason an attorney is not using the system because not all attorneys are, are tech savvy. So they'll also ask for, you know, something from the attorney through me sometimes. Well, I guess she thinks because she's dealt with, you know, she's had meetings. She's in the courtroom. The legal counsel and Di Giovanni have talked to her directly. Directly. Yeah, there you go. But look at this. So she says inmate Boone expressed a desire to have a tablet available for her use throughout the day. But we clarified that tablets are accessible to all inmates on a standard schedule seven days a week ensuring reasonable access without the need for further action that's exactly what i just explained to you is there's going to be a one or more i don't know how many and each person will get their time on it but also it's my understanding that that time is not free and when i send a message it costs me 25 cents every time and if I know somebody has no money on their books, I'm not putting money on their books, but I can send them a stamp so they can reply to me. And well, so you, were, you just. Mm -hmm. You said something about, is that what you were talking about? The text messaging? Because you said there was a new mm -hmm. texting system. Mm -hmm. You had asked me about a texting system. It's the tablets. So it's like a messaging system. 
Okay. And it's quick, but it's not as instant as texting with someone. Although I exchange short messages and I do it through an app. But like I said, they have to be reviewed. The message has to be reviewed before it could be passed on to the inmate and vice versa. And like, for example, um, I was trying to communicate with a client the other day and I had sent him a message, traveled to the jail. By the time he, I got to the jail, like as soon as I got to the jail, he's like, no, I need you to come tomorrow. And I was like, oh my God. So I had to turn around and leave. And I didn't stay because the waiting situation at my jail currently is, is horrendous. And I didn't want to sit in the lobby forever. So it was nice to see that like he was not prepared for what I needed him to be prepared for. So I didn't mind driving back home. But that's what's really great about this system. However, they, you know, they get it kind of on a rotation. So he couldn't just sit there and stare at it and wait for me to respond. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he has to come back later. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So on the 20th, mm -hmm. it looks like she didn't pick up her laptop until 8 p.m. that day. That, so she, so that she would tell me she was with somebody, yeah. She was in the meeting, yeah. And So is there a limit to the number of times she could be in there with an attorney? No. She could be in there as long as they want? I would think. As long as the staff is willing to do it. I asked the, the staff, um, I asked one of the, the deputies at my jail, because I got there really early one morning. I was like, oh, I was surprised you're open. He's like, well, it's 24-7, ma'am. I'm like, really? And he's like, well, can't say anybody would be happy about it, but yes. Mm. So... You know, people if, get arrested if, at all hours of the evening. <laughs> right. Well, they're processed at another jail. But I mean, if you know, you have to to do a provisional visit in my in my county because you don't make an appointment. You just show up. So they have to go locate that person and bring them to the professional visiting area. Whereas with her jail, um, to my knowledge, the last time I was there you did need an appointment, although I'm not sure if an attorney needs an appointment. But if your attorney is coming from all the way from Pensacola, she's got a court date set for October and he's offering to jump in here at the last minute. Do I believe those meetings are that long? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I do. Yep. Can he bring in lunch to her and everything while they're doing that? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So it says that on the 21st, she arrived to the dorm from her interview and they don't put ex the exact time in here but it's it's observed on 8 13 p.m so yeah it looks like both the days they were going at it hardcore for the whole day yeah it sh from her interview with the laptop so she she took everything with her to meet with this person with this attorney what Retur what yeah. what would I, what do you think would happen oh wait Hold on, 813 to 816. What am I not reading here? Numbers are not my friend. Well, he observed it, I guess, at 813 p.m. And he created the noting, notation of it, I guess, at 816 p.m. Or he or she. Rosa. Oh, okay, okay. Here's my question, though. Mm -hmm. Do you think Judge Cranick, so they go, so he says, okay, because I think this will be added to when Tuesday's hearing. And I think what's going to happen is they're going to address this, right? They've got to. They've got to address this at the next hearing. Oh, 100%. So he's going to say, okay, look, could could Cranick come back and say, okay, you can be your attorney. Obviously, if you want to be your attorney, you can be your attorney, whatever. No, he has to approve this guy to be her attorney. Does he not? Because he's already said, you have to defend yourself now. I'm not going through this again. Well, what he said was he wasn't going to give her any more state appointed attorneys. So okay. that's a private defense attorney who agrees to get paid through the JAC. I read um, the what you just had up a, a minute ago, his motion for a continuance, yeah. um, you know, where he's saying that he's just now taking the case or whatever. I thought his requests were not unreasonable. Um, he laid it out very nicely, didn't he? He did. He did. Um, I don't know that there's all that much complexity to Sarah's case that you're going to need a gazillion experts. And based on what I've watched from your videos and what I've read, she's already had, I mean, she's, it's not like she's been sitting there without legal counsel for four years. 
there have been attorneys on there that have actively done things. There cannot be that much more to do. I mean, she acts as though there's endless amounts of discovery and there, it's just not the case. Like her police report is very straightforward. There's probably a handful of depositions. And if her phone, which I'm guessing was a pay-as-you-go kind of phone, did not probably have a whole lot on it. Like, for example, if if I have an iPhone, and I've been using an iPhone for 10 years, and I use iCloud, right, and they go and download my phone, that could be in the tens of thousands of pages because when you get a phone extracted, it takes everything, including the file system, every emoji, every thing you could possibly think of. I don't think her phone extraction could be all that big, and I guarantee you she's seen it by now. Oh, yeah. She saw it since... She saw it when Padilla was in there. She had absolutely, to absolutely, absolutely. Um, he says thirty-eight days remain before trial. But what he, I think what he said in here that caught my attention was that his professional witness or whatever this person is for the battered spouse syndrome defense would need to almost gain a rapport with her. Yeah. So that goes back to like the mitigation idea where I told you that that mitigators, you know, kind of jump off from the get go to develop relationships with the with the defendant and their families. Um, I imagine that could be that very well could be true. I don't know that the judge I don't know how much room the judge is going to allow for this. He's I'll tell you what the he will do his research. He will look at the case law. And if you scroll back um, down a little, where, where do you want me to go? just to the top of this see here yeah how he's written this memorandum of law yeah. this is what this is what the defendants don't ever understand they don't know how to support an argument sarah's version was to write out definitions which is not unusual but here he's citing cases to uh bolster his argument regarding continuance and how um well, this is federal court must be afforded the right to assistance of counsel. We're not in federal court. Um, the matter of continuance is traditionally within the sound discretion of the trial judge. And it is not every denial of a request for more time that violates due process, even if the party fails to offer evidence or is compelled to defend without counsel. Contrarywise, that's a new word on me, a myopic insistence upon expeditiousness, man, he, got the big words in the justifiable request for delay can render the right to defend with counsel an empty formality so interesting because i'm not seeing is he quoting any for that's federal those are supreme court cases um normally you would see florida law huh interesting a, so a he's defendant charged with a serious crime must not be stripped of his rights to have sufficient time to advise with counsel and prepare his defense. I don't think that's a very good. Uh, that's a very good statement. When well, you look at this was four years. I, I mean, I agree. And I think the judge has laid that out very clearly in terms, especially, you know, at the beginning, I think that with Padilla and, and then, um, I kind of checked out for a while and, and came back along when I got bored of other things and saw how Cashman, um, how that all went. But, she, man, she got a lot done fast. Um, yeah. I'm surprised that I am not seeing Florida law cited in this. He's citing U.S. Supreme Court. California. But but look, so if you read 422U.S. dot that's the Supreme Court. That's okay. how you read that site. So even though it's a it's a case out of California, it's in uh, the 422 refers to to a particular. I want to say book. That's probably the wrong word. Um, book of of cases. You know how like there's an atlas, or there used to be property records were kept on a book. Uh, there's got to be a better word. I'm just not thinking of it. So anyway, it's it's in vol maybe volume 422, U.S. 806, 807. Those are the page numbers. And the case is 1975. That's when it was decided. Oh, okay. 
So oh, you and the other he, one was 1964 or 1994. Yeah, and again, so the site is to the is U.S. And here, down here, this is a, a federal case, F.3D. That's the federal third district in the 11th circuit in 1995. And then there was one in 1940. Yeah, and he's not using any floor. And there's 1932. It's okay. Old law does not mean it's bad law at all. Okay. Because, because some of the first cases that you will ever learn about if you start to study the law is our old, old cases, old cases. But what surprises me about this is I'm used to having Florida lawyers write Florida motions. So we have controlling circuits or districts. Yes, district courts of appeal. And we have a Florida Supreme Court. So normally, if you're making an argument in a Florida court, you're using what's called controlling law from Florida courts, which means cases that have come before this one that have similar facts that have ruled in the way in which the attorney wants this court to rule. And you do it from a place similar to where you are, which is Florida. He's used all federal stuff, which is interesting. So I, I'm not Kranich, saying it's wrong. It's just interesting. So Kranich sees this and he's like, okay, my fear is, I could see Kranich saying this. My fear is I allow you to take this case on at this point in time. Yes, you spent time with the defendant, but you've really only been in here. You know, you spent time with her for two days or whatever, uh, or four days. Uh, what are the chances that you're not going to come back? I guess he wouldn't say this in open court, but like, what are the chances that you're, he's not going to come back? So, so Kranich's like, you know, you could take on this case, but I'm not going to ever let you let you uh, come off of it. Motion to dismiss that's, or what was it? Motion with a withdrawal. I will, won't allow a withdrawal. Right, right, right. I mean. So I think this judge, from based on everything I've seen, is going to do his research. He's going to read these cases if he's not already familiar with them. But I think he'll probably go to the Florida law, too, and see what's there and maybe what's in the statutes here. And then uh, make a decision. But I agree with you. I don't know if he's going to be inclined to get. He's erring on the side of caution, yet being very deliberate in what he's doing. So he's not being like overly generous in the, in, for example, the amount of time that she wanted. Will I have more time now to prepare since I still haven't got this? No. The dates are what the dates are, ma'am. That's what he said in one of them. She's acting like she's never seen a bit of, of the discovery in her case. And that is just not the truth. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not that complicated. It, it's just, it's not that complicated of a case. Maybe time to get an expert, but also I think there have probably, I'd have to go back uh, like where you were reading all the motions for costs. You would know better than I, because I have not done that on on whether other experts have been retained for psychiatric evaluation. Well, here's what's weird about this. So in my docket dive that I've been doing, there's only, there's been a couple of experts referenced, but it didn't seem like there was enough time to really get anything done. The only one that had time to get something done was Padilla. Cause even though Marco or Bankowitz was on it for over a year, he moved really slow because he had so many issues going on. He had mm -hmm. a couple of capital cases, he had a car accident. He got COVID. You know, he wasn't moving at the same speed Padilla was, to be nice about it. Right. And so it didn't seem like he got a whole lot done. Hobson didn't have much time with her. He 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 was like, uh, uh He gave up. I wouldn't say he gave up. He just, he was done with her pretty quickly. Yeah. And then, so now I'm to the point on my docket dive where, okay, now Patricia Cashman's coming back in or coming in. And so I have not seen... Uh, I have not gone deep, I have not done my deep dive into her portion yet. I was going to do that this weekend. So I, to say that there was some experts already brought in. Yeah, I think there have been. If any have met with her, I think that it was back when Padilla was doing this. I really don't think yeah. that anything was done. Well, I know that Padilla is um, from other cases I've watched of his. I know he he will get experts and he will do them early. Um, and he's pretty thorough about it. So, you know, it, I don't know. I, I don't know. Patricia Cashman's probably the person <laughs> that knows the best at this point or Billy Lane, yeah. um, you know, how far things have come. 
But if you go back and you read some of what, maybe it was Cashman's that I was reading, that she, that Sarah asks for non-viable legal strategies, which is to say, well, why can't we say this? Why can't we do this? Why can't this person testify? Why, why, why? Well, because it's, there's laws and there's rules. And if there weren't, can you imagine the chaos? Mm -hmm. So if this attorney is... I mean, he seems to have laid it out very clearly, but he's also put out, look, if you go back up to your page two. So wait. it starts here. What are you, what are you talking about? Okay. During these meetings. So evidence includes photographs, videotapes, calendars, text messages, notes, and witness names and numbers. There's not that much. Um, undersigned counsel has spoken with numerous potential expert witnesses. Okay. Can you keep scrolling? Covering a range of possible defenses, so actively vetting several additional experts upon directives from interested parties. Okay, so I'm not saying this attorney has not done those things. What I will tell you is that based on my personal experience, attorneys usually have their go-to experts and then they've got their backups. So it wouldn't be, unless he's not familiar in doing this kind of case, it would not be normal to be calling every expert in the state of Florida and vetting them. Well, his website states that he does DUIs and murder cases. Interesting combination. Yeah. You want to see his website? I thought I went to it earlier, but yeah, bring it up. What's it, James Owens? Yeah, I think that's yeah. correct. His website is interesting, I thought, anyway. I think I just brought it up and looked at the address. That image just is coming. Kind of... Yeah. But, Text uh, me 24 7. So, oh, I clicked on service area, and it put a pin in where he is, but then it showed the entire state of Florida. I was like, oh, okay. Oh. So, Milton, but if you... That just showed, but if you keep, yeah, if you go out, he doesn't like put a boundary unless I missed it. No, I don't see a boundary. So if you keep zooming out and zooming out, it gets to the entire state of Florida. So then I looked um, at the, so that's a panhandle, right? And if yeah. you look at how far away that is from Orlando. Oh yeah, he'd have to go. He is, take, he'd have to go. I Oh, trust me. I've driven this drive so many times. Take the panhandle down the through Jackson or Tyler, through Tallahassee. Take. I wonder if it wouldn't be easier to fly. How well, long would might. it take to drive that? Well, here was the problem that I always had. Now he's going to be flying out of Pensacola, so it may be different. But um, for me, when I was trying to fly home from Florida around the Tampa, yeah, I was taking St. Tampa Air um, International. They wanted to always take me through Georgia and then cut back to Mobile, so I'd have like a uh like a stop or stupid. whatever and it was like by the time were, you did all that it was just quicker to drive i thought there were regional airlines that would fly like from miami to tampa for example and tampa to jacksonville orlando to jacksonville or tallahassee that kind of thing i don't know well i know padilla had made note that spirit was flying him over so i'm sure that maybe spirit does the smaller things like that where they just go straight into yeah the, i haven't I, flown in years so i haven't looked at it in years but i just recently got on a plane for the first time in a decade i haven't flown since before 2001 since the 9-11 oh wow yeah uh yeah so going back to his other what i was going to show you is i saw i see dui murder armed robbery gra aggravated assault theft or robbery sexual assault domestic assault those are all um first to third degree felonies decades of experience representing clients facing a wide variety of criminal charges okay well he's a criminal defense attorney i i am no expert just a little surprised that he's only citing federal law. Hmm. So okay, I he was wonder... an ASA in Pensacola. So that means he was a prosecutor. Right? We talked yeah. about he was a prosecutor and then private. And that is common 
Is it? Okay. Carrie, it is so common. Okay. So a lot of times you're going to have, by the time somebody is a private criminal defense attorney, they may have been both a prosecutor and a public defender. One of the main attorneys I work with was a chief prosecutor for felony division. Now he's been in, in private practice criminal defense for 30 years. That is not unusual. They okay. go there. Um, if they go to work for the state and they have student loans, if they, it's such a mess right now. But basically, if you work in either for the public defender, you work for the state's attorney, you have student loans and you do what you're supposed to do. You follow the guidelines, make the payments, your loans can be forgiven. But also because it's public service, but also that's a really great place uh, to learn the ropes. Yeah, and that makes sense. So you, you see that a lot. There are some career um, prosecutors, obviously, and career uh, defense attorneys that work for the state public defenders, but this is not uncommon at all. And actually, I think having a pro somebody with prosecutorial experience, if you're a defense, if you're on the defense now, I think that's great because think about it. It's, it's having someone who is, who has been on the other side. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> he was only in it for three years, but still he's, he's gotten, he's, he's been able to see that side of it. So he knows he might exactly. know where they're coming from, but he's been in private practice for criminals law since the, for 20 years. That's a right. nice bit of time. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. So, I'm surprised. He's just, I'm just surprised how far away he is, but Hey, you know, if he's willing to take it on, then. I mean, maybe by now she's learned she's got to be nice and can't be a pretend judge anymore or she's on her own. Well, if you look at where were we at? We were looking at the map. Go back to this map really quick. I want to show you something. It's honestly, well, I guess it is. It's to me. And, and I guess if you're flying, it's no more diff further than Padilla was from Miami to Tampa. You know, if you're going to fly. He was Miami to Orlando. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep putting a lamp down, but you're right. Orlando. So, I mean, mileage wise, yeah, he's further, but you're right. He's going to fly that. He's going to fly it. He's I would fly. I mean, if you're busy, I know there's regional planes like from Miami to Tampa. I, you know, there's got to be one that goes from Orlando up to the panhandle because Tallahassee is the capital. So even if you're flying to into Tallahassee, you're closer than driving from Orlando. Okay, so let's do speculation time. We're going to do <laughs> speculations. This is just right. speculations. Let's make sure we put that little disclaimer in there. Correct. Speculation. Speculations only. Sarah does not have a pot to piss in. She has no money. And, uh, and I just don't see Brian going, yeah, I'll put the money up. She doesn't have family. Oh, she does have a brother in, that was a Marine. And he does live near her in Altamont Springs. But the other brother is a lifetime criminal. Unless somebody's paying this guy a little bit, what, what are they going to say? We'll pay for your expenses to travel back and forth, but your time's well, going to have to be pro bono. Wouldn't he have had to say pro bono in his motion? Uh, uh, I don't know that he has to say that. I know he was asking for costs. Let's go back and look at it. Just retained defense counsel. Request this court to where's his notice of appearance? Is this the same? Is this the only see? This is a motion to continue. Did he file a notice of appearance? Let's go back to the docket and see if we've got any. It just says because yeah, he should have filed a notice of appearance. Maybe it hasn't been uploaded to the docket yet. Hang on. The defendant has just retained defense counsel and a notice of appearance was it cuts off at the bottom. Oh, okay. Hang on. Let me go down. Filed on Friday, August 30th. That'll tell you. That should tell you. Okay. So it's going to be uploaded later today. During these meetings. Okay. Undersigned. I want to see. There's a part about money in here. I think he's looking for costs. From JSD. Experts develop full and competent. Okay. Said time. It said defense requires time not only. Here. Nine. This process cannot be accomplished in the time available before trial, particularly given the JC ministerial hurdles, which must be cleared when dealing with an indigent defendant. I think that's an exaggeration 
because the JAC is much faster than they used to be. Prior to COVID, it was a slog. Um, but now, so the same way that I have a contract with the JAC, all of these specialists, anybody who's willing to take on this kind of work, they have a contract with the JAC. Therefore, all that has to happen is like we talked about earlier, which is um, the attorney puts forward a motion asking for money for whatever purpose and sends it to the JAC via email. They respond. They either object or they don't. There's either a hearing or there's not. The judge orders it or he doesn't. It's not that complicated. And he says a number, look where he says number 11, she's indigent, but he just says for costs, the defense will need government funds to assist the pay the experts. I'm wondering if he doesn't practice in federal court more than in uh, state court. Defense will need government funds. Interesting. Hmm. So, so if the speculation is, is somebody paying for it, unless it's her fan club, as she has mentioned, I don't Korea, know. Who, Australia, Germany. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, from everything I have read or heard about this case, Brian was basically her lifeline. Yeah. He was paying her a thousand dollars a month. And in the forms that I saw, where what's his name had to uh, i'm sorry i'm gonna say that where george had to file indigency he mm -hmm. put in there that he was bringing in anywhere between at one point it was 350 a week or a month no 350 a month no a week to 200 dollars a week because he was like in and out of jobs or whatever so i think he was helping her pay for groceries and things like that he was helping out but it, it, as far as like anything beyond living expenses she didn't have it unless now he did. I did find where they sold their house and I've, I, I've been working on something in the background that I haven't put out there yet, but they ended up selling that house for a decent amount of money. Mm. Now she signed it over to him. According mm. to the property appraiser's website, she signed it over to him on a quick claim deed. And then Brian sold the house and they had, they sold it for a lot more than they paid for it. So she might have some money. Lump sum. Yeah, he may have done a like when he sold it, given her a chunk out of that. And if if or maybe he, I don't know. I mean, that was done. Yeah, let me pull that up. Do you have time? Are you? Let me know when you need to go. Okay. No, I'm good. I'm looking for Orange County property appraiser. Look at you knowing your way around all the records. Well, I used to do this in insurance all the time when I did mm. financial insurance. So I'm like used to, I'm very familiar with looking up the property appraiser's website. Yeah. Uh let's see. Quick search. I didn't save my thing. Owner name. It's not gonna be in there. Let me think. So I, it seems as though based on what Sarah has said publicly that Brian had primary custody of their child. So he would not, Brian would not be paying Sarah child support. It was probably an alimony thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or I, I know of a lot of people who the Florida courts don't like to give alimony so much anymore. They've made, they want everything 50, 50 now. And there's a schedule for every it's, it's more complicated than it used to be. But um, a lot of people I know just have agreements outside of a divorce decree or a child support agreement. They just are like, we're not going to go through the court here. I'm going to give you this much money a month. Um, it's bringing up his new address and I don't want to put that out there because I don't want to dox him, but mm -hmm. he, for those people that, they, that think he moved away, he's still in that area. I wonder if he has family. But I was hoping it would bring up his old address. Let me see if it brings up his old address. 
So it sounds like the attorney money. is looking for money to pay for the experts. But the question, like you were asking me before, can they do that again? You started out asking me if if this kind of expert has already been retained, can they do it again? Yeah. They'd have to make an argument for why there would be good cause to do it again. And I mean, at this point, based on watching Christian Lake in that um, hearing where everybody was told everything, the JAC was providing uh, Billy Lane with a lot of money to try to assist, you know, facilitate getting things done for Sarah. He can't give her legal advice. Um, nobody can accept an attorney. And if somebody is, that means they're practicing law without a license. So I'm always very careful to tell my clients that while I have attorney client privilege, anything I tell them is my personal opinion and I'm not giving them legal advice. So nothing I've said on your channel is legal advice. It's my personal opinion and in some cases, educated guesses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up my recent report on Brian real quick. But for example, if she's already had a pet scan or or something like that they're and th they're asking for another one i don't see that being a good i would say no but maybe on doctors that have different specialties i don't know i don't know what all they've asked for in the past all right here's here's their old address let me pull i'll show you share this out with you this is their old address so oh, they part they purchased mm -hmm. it Let's say where I saw the sales. Sales. He they did the quick claim deed right here for a hundred dollars, but I think it was a really a dollar. I don't think it was a hundred dollars. They sold it for five ten. Oh wow! But they purchased it in two thousand and six for three thirty. So they have equity in it. Plus they sold it. Mm -hmm. Well, we, yeah. So, yeah, they, they got a chunk of change on that. And I would assume, I don't know, did he have to give her all that? It, it would it would blow my mind to think that in 2020, no, she was already in jail. She was already in jail at that point, at 2023. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So, maybe he's had this money sitting over to the side. It may be, it may be that the court has said you can't abscond with that money. Really? Because it's possible. I mean, it's possible that again. I, so this is a speculation section. You told me so. Right. <laughs> so I'm speculating that if there are currently family proceedings going on right in in the court that we can't see the domestic relations, that it's it it is potential possible that that money is sitting in an escrow account. And that's why then. And that's why there's all these meetings or all these hearings over on the domestic side. Could be. Yeah. Because they're saying, okay, I, my guess is they're waiting for, it, it, if I'm right at all in this, before Brian can take it all, my guess is that they would be waiting to see how she's adjudicated, if she's found guilty or not. And then it would depend, possibly. That's so, speculation. Speculation. And and let's say, let's let's run with that. And probably this attorney's like, okay, well, when you get those funds, because eventually maybe you will eventually, or even if you're found guilty, you're going to get some funds. That's what you could pay me out of. Until now, I'm, he may not be, because I just figured like when Padilla came in, he was doing, for, doing it for publicity um, more than anything. That right. was just my speculation. Yeah, he took several high-profile cases, I believe, right around the same time. Was he... Somebody said something about they thought he was working with Casey Anthony at one time. Padilla. Mm -mm. No. That was... What's his name? That, that was... Worked, Trey that Long was, Martin guy. It was Jose Diaz. Jose Bias. Bias, thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't Mauricio... Because I think that would have been too long ago. That would have been, I don't know when he was licensed, but wasn't Casey Anthony in like 2011? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Was it that or uh, might have been further away from that? I think it was 2011. Was it? 
I don't know. With me and numbers, you can't <laughs> you can't always be sure. So let's re let's reiterate our speculations here. So okay. maybe this attorney says, okay, well, she's got this money from this house. There's that, potentially I, money from the house, right? Yeah. So that could help pay. And then um, until then, you know, we'll move forward with JAC. If anything, I'll just get a lot of publicity out of this case because he knows how much is involved well, in that. Now, let me uh, let me say this, though. You can you can hire an attorney and still be deemed indigent for costs. Costs only like Padilla did. Well, 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 Padilla was pro bono and, then and did cost. had her okay. indigent for costs. You can pay for an attorney on your own and then still file for indigency for costs to get the JAC to pay for the other stuff. That makes sense. Okay. So, so it's I just, not one or the other. It, it, you know, it can be split. I just feel like Kranick's going to be like, he's going to look at this really hard. He may not make a decision on Tuesday yet. He might have to, though. He's probably already looking at this stuff at this point. Oh, my And he's going to figure sure. it out over the weekend of what he's going to do. Um, but pros and cons. But I mean, there's a possibility that this guy could get in there and continue to work with her and then breach his bowling point. I just feel like if Cranick allows him to come on board, there's going to have to be a stipulation that your motion to withdraw is going to have to be pretty dang significant. Right. And I don't even know, I don't even know where you would, how that would be addressed. I don't, but I, um, that was my question. Could he refuse him to withdraw? He can. Correct. I mean, the judge has to give you permission to withdraw from a case. And if somebody doesn't like that decision, then they appeal it. It would be, um, I believe, what's called an interlocutory appeal, where proceedings go on hold at the trial level so that the party can appeal whatever decision up to a district court of appeal. So it could still delay the trial then? Mm-hmm. Oh, my word. So that's the whole that's what he's got to consider if he lets this guy. Yeah, I mean, I think he absolutely has to consider the totality of every scenario, um, you know, and and considering how much correspondence is, is, is filed into the public docket and how much video is available on YouTube. Certainly, this man must understand what he has agreed to do. And it looks like he's spent four days with her. So, I mean, that's a lot of time. I, I'm guessing he knows what he's signing up for at this point. You know, it's another thing, too, is he's kind of like Bankowitz. He's not he, it, he's probably not a huge law firm where he has all these people at his, at his fingers that he can help him. He could delegate a bunch of stuff, too. I mean, he could be, but I just usually that's like those firms where you see there's multiple partners involved. It's just mm -hmm. him. Mm hmm. Of course, I'm going off of um, The Good Wife, what I saw on The Good Wife. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great show. I loved that. I did, too. So, well, I, I mean, most, most, if he's a solo practitioner at, he, and he's been in business for as long as he has, he's probably at least got a paralegal or a legal assistant. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, he doesn't have like a bunch of interns and all that help. He could oh, have no. interns, but you know, just right. somebody we go, okay, you go research this portion, you go research this portion. Right. He's probably got like maybe two people in there, but he could hire somebody part time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I mean, I could just go off on this. I, and I, and the funny thing is, is that all of our subs could too. There are so many of the subs that watch this stuff and they are just as into the, the little minute details. <laughs> yes, I am. Well, that's that's kind of why I, I had reached out to you. Is like, can I provide a little bit of clarification? I mean, I know it's fun to speculate, but um, I also want people to understand how the process really works. You know. Well, tell everybody when when you first reached out to me. Tell everybody what the first thing you said was. Do you remember no. about? You were like, that's nothing. When I, when I added up. The oh total, yeah. 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 I, I was at 180 something thousand at that point that had been approved. Not that it had been spent. Cause I was, I'm still waiting for JAC to send me that, but that had been approved. And I was right. like, oh so, my gosh. And, but it, but that's, and so my response to you was that is not a lot of money. One, because you don't know that all of it has been spent, right? All of it may not have been invoiced for. We don't know that. Um, and 
the state has every resource available to them. They have resources available to them, such as access to cell phone experts um, who to do the physical extractions from the phones via Cellbrite. Um, I told you that I recently had a trial where they flew an FBI agent in who was a specialist to testify for 30 minutes in a four-day murder trial about one phone. Jesus. The defense can't do that. Mm-mm. There, you know, it, it's the odds are stacked. I never thought I'd work in criminal. <laughs> I never thought I would work in criminal defense ever. And then I got exposed to it and I saw how uneven it was. And then I was like, okay, I can understand why people do criminal defense work now. It's not so much about morality as it is balancing the scales and trying to keep um, law enforcement and the state in check almost, you know, it's, it's just, it's so crazy how, how skewed it is. And so that's, you know, that's why I'm interested in it. That's why I do it because every once in a while it, there really and truly is someone who has been horrifically wrongfully convicted mischarged overcharged it's you know there are mistakes being made Mm -hmm. and those people need advocates well and there are cases and we've seen it now that we have the internet where people are being uh exonerated wrongfully yeah yeah a lot dna stuff now Uh uh-huh a lot but i'll tell you what's what's the new dna is cell phone data we are leaving so much data behind us every single place we go and people think they're smart they think they have turned off everything and they haven't they think that the law enforcement can't get to your iCloud they can they can get to your Google they can get to everything so my advice if somebody wants to go and commit a crime is get a car from 1975 and drive that and do not go shopping in the murder aisle at Walmart (laughs) <laughs> because Walmart has the best cameras. They have the best video system. So everybody goes to Walmart either before or after. They go to get their supplies for why committing the murder or they get their supplies for trying to clean up the murder. I have no idea. But if you start <laughs> watching if you start watching cases, you know, I because I am by myself a lot, I stream trials all the time. Um, until I get burnt out and I can't do true crime 24 seven. So I'm, I'm flabbergasted that everybody goes to Walmart. So (laughs) I've just, I've gone to calling it the murder aisle. Stop going to the murder aisle on Walmart at Walmart, because that's going to get you caught. Go to a small locally owned (laughs) hardware hardware store store. and buy your murder supplies. Exactly. I mean, that could be. You know, I, that could be a great advertisement for a small um, hardware store. You can mm-hmm. buy your you can buy your murder supplies murder here supplies because here. we don't have surveillance systems. Exactly. Um, yep. I was I, I was going through some things. Uh, I was deep diving last night late, and I, I don't want to get too into this case because I don't think we can. But um, one thing I noticed on a general thing, and this is my little detective brain going into gear. They had called his daughters and her son at some point in time. And they were using that as this was all out. And this was on the body cam footage interviews with the detectives. Mm -hmm. So my first thought was, okay, so they're going to use those timestamps from her phone. Now, George and Sarah shared a phone. So they'll be able to pick up the timestamps of when they called those because this all happened. The the them stop playing, doing puzzles and artwork and everything, and then going into the hide and seek. The hide and seek happened after they made all those phone calls. But then there was one point where they had said, and I'm, I'm trying to find my note. I guess somebody had texted somebody. And then, oh, yeah, when Brian called her, she called him back. That was where I was trying to pick up the, the timestamp from because I was getting into the whole rigor mortis thing and her pulling him out of the suitcase and all that. Mm-hmm. But it was like the fact that 
I, I, I don't know. I, and I know you can't talk on this because I'll probably have to cut this part out. But like the fact that she at 11.15 or whatnot, 11.14 p.m., she's done that video, 11.12 p.m. She's, she's, she's recorded that video. So that that's going to be, that's going to be time stamped in her phone, in the Cellbrite extraction. There will be no, but no doubt about that. And then the next time stamp is going to be because Brian said she did call him that evening, but he, in his interview, he said, I didn't really listen to a whole lot because she was really drunk or whatever. I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention. So well, I, I would think that's going to be key. Her. It could be. And he was calling her a whole bunch the next morning. Trying to find so out she, what was going to go on with their son. Yeah. Right. And then the officer said, but it's one o'clock in the afternoon. And Sarah said, uh, yeah, but I just got out of bed or something. She said effect. in the first, she said in the second interview in the car that she couldn't remember what time she got up. But when the cops first got on scene, she told the um, arriving officers that she got out of bed around 1230 ish. Mm. And she made comments about how. She said Brian had been calling her since 11.30 a.m. He got a hold of her around 12 and 4, 12.49 p.m. Then she, he came over, which he's, I've already pulled that up. He's like literally 0.8 miles away from her house where he used to live. So he comes over. After he comes over and he says, I call 911 and he walks out the house. She calls 911 at 101 p.m. But my thought is. We know that George was in the suitcase for 12 hours then. Wow. Is that on the MEU's report? Well, if you if you add up the time period of when mm -hmm. the suitcase video was taken to when she got out of bed, it was more okay. than 12 hours. You know what I mean? Okay, right. But the phone will call her out. I mean, if she has if she's lying about any kind of time the phone extraction, even if you think you have deleted call history or messaging history, guess what? Your carrier has your connection information. I could tell you a whole lot about cell phone extractions. And what that might be another video we do, huh? <laughs> they don't even need your phone to get enough information to convict you. They don't need your phone. Was isn't it Apple that's so hard to get the the police? Apple's have to harder, warrant. but but it's yeah. called a warrant. Yeah, and people exactly. are like, well, <laughs> that's what people don't understand. Well, no, they can't get into the my this that or the other. I'm like, mm -hmm. right. So it's called probable cause affidavit written by a police officer of some sort, which is then taken to a judge, which is then turned into a warrant, granting access to the phone. So if you don't turn over a passcode, they can still, it gives them permission to brute force it. And there's backdoor ways in because people, you can go in through someone's, if you use an Android, for example, you can go in through their Gmail. There's a, in Google, there's a My Activities. And it, I had it all downloaded from a federal case. There's a, there, People aren't as sly as they think they are. And the phone will call you out every single time. And that's the new DNA. That's the new DNA. Well, um, uh, we can't get into this some stuff, stuff I want to talk about. But out last night when I was getting off the live stream that I did, I said, OK, guys, let's start doing conspiracy theories. Let's throw these out or or let's just go through what our theories of how we think it played out. And a couple of us, us were like. Did she lure him in the suitcase or did she hit him with a bat and then put him in the suitcase? Oh, well. and, yeah, I've heard the bat be mentioned. There's a bat. But that bat could have just been there because yeah. of her son and it Correct. wasn't used. They don't know that for a fact. What right. all they have are his the Emmy report versus the noises that the neighbor heard. Oh, and by the way, the neighbors, the neighbors interview is his timeline is exact with with her cell phone. I think that's damning evidence for, for her when I heard him speak on an interview about the sound. Yeah. Um, my speculation, <laughs> my, my speculation is that suitcase went down the stairs. I have no idea if that's true, but from what the neighbor said. He never heard anything like it and it shook the walls. Right. And did and it. Correct me if I'm mistaken, because you're way more up to 
date with this case than I am. But didn't George have like actual injuries that you wouldn't have just from like being in a suitcase? He, he had a lip injury. Uh, he had a, something on his head, something on his arm. Places where that were, if he was in the suitcase, it would have hit. Like you know, right? That was a soft-sided suitcase too. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like a hard shell one. Somebody made a good point in the comments last night that think about the fact that she had made a comment that she was giving away clothes and the suitcase was going to be given away too. And if he, she's giving away her son's clothes, more than likely her son had the second bedroom. His clothes would have been stored upstairs in the second bedroom. Why would she take the empty suitcase and put it downstairs rather than keeping it up with where his clothes are at upstairs? So we, we speculate, we believe that he got into the suit. He, he hid in the suitcase upstairs. Why has nobody ever said anything about adults playing hide and seek? And I did from the very beginning. That's the very first video I ever did on this. This, this, I'm telling you, I, I, thank you. Thank you. I thank don't you, drink Sam. anymore. <laughs> I've come to an age where I do not drink anymore, but I'll tell you, there was a time when I certainly did. Um, and I don't remember ever playing hide and seek as a grown adult while drinking or sober for that matter. Well, so I mean, how, how, I mean, if you listen to the way she describes things, arts and crafts, puzzles, hide and seek, enjoying, she said that several times, enjoying each other's company. She said that three times in her interview, the first interview with the cop. I, and then doesn't she say in, in some of her writing or see, I don't remember now what I've read of hers versus what's been read out loud on YouTube. Cause like I said, I have stuff on in the background all the time. Um, but doesn't she say somewhere that she excels at everything or yes. she gets straight A's at everything? Yes. Something to that effect. And I keep thinking, are you stuck at like 10? Yeah. Yeah. It just seems odd to me. And it's, it's odd to me that I'm not hearing, but, but I said, like I told you, I stopped following this case for a long time. Um, it just was odd to me that nobody was saying, what do you mean you were playing hide? <laughs> the very first video I did, I was like, what is this woman, his babysitter or his girlfriend? And that place the way she talked about big. him. Yeah, exactly. But, but, you know, I guess if you're a psychologist, you look at it like, yes, yeah, she was controlling the whole situation. All that they were doing, she was controlling. We're going to do puzzles now. She said she got him artwork and puzzles so that he wouldn't be so stressed out about not having a job. She, in, in, the, in the interview at the police station, the way she describes him, and she goes into detail about how he'd been stressing out and things have been going and how he was. She talks about him as if he was a child that had issues. Not as if he's my boyfriend and I'm being, trying to be there for him. You know, it was just so That's very weird. Yeah, I just, I, I just, it, that hit me. Like, why does this sound like elementary school or something? Yeah. You know, I just, I just didn't understand, like, as an adult, why would, what, okay, how does that even work? If you're playing hide and seek, you voluntarily get into a suitcase. She zips you up. How is that hide and seek? Okay, she says on here, because I was listening in a couple of times the way she said it. Okay. The first time, I last night I listened to a couple of the interviews over and I was pausing them and, mm -hmm. and making notes. You're more educated Not, in it than I am. I can only okay. take so much. <laughs> in her interview in the car with the cops, where is it she states? She says, we're playing hide and seek. Third time, enjoying each other's company. She said the suitcase was downstairs, but it was being donated. She goes into that detail. She mentioned Just making a point of telling you that it was not upstairs. Yeah. She mentions door on top of the stairwell. You know, sometimes we hide in that and we try to see, we try to see who can find the best place to hide. She pauses when she says, well, we were done in the suitcase cause it wasn't in good. Well, the, and she's like, ah, I don't know. What, what was your question? So she kind of pauses there. Like she was going to say like the zippers broke on it or something. And she's having a hard time focusing during this interview. And she says, almost seems like starting to explain the broken zip zipper, but she catches herself. She said he, he hid in the suitcase and they were both laughing with him in there. He, she said, I didn't zip it up all the way. So right there, she claimed that she did. Then she says, 
that she had made a comment somewhere in here about, well, I was in the shower hiding. He didn't come and find me. So I said, ha ha, if you're not going to come and find me? Fine. Then I'm going to zip you up in the suitcase. What? That was, uh, she said, she hid in the shower, came downstairs after waiting for him, and he was playing in the suitcase because we both thought it was funny. She said she zipped it up to get back in. And, or she, wait, she said she zipped it up to get back at him for not coming to find her. Broken suitcase, paper clip in lieu of the zipper handle thingy. She said she zipped it up, but she didn't do it far, and two of his fingers were sticking out. So she left, so she left that to go upstairs, and um, she says something about normally after we play hide and seek, you know, that's when we go have intimate relations. Mm. Okay. Um, you know, whatever. Um, and then she says in the next morning, I put him in the suitcase and we were playing kind of hide and seek kind of thing. That was on the 911 call. And then when she's, she's like, well, you need to do, you need to do, uh, is he still alive or was he breathing? Weird? Blood's coming out of his mouth and he's purple. She said she pulled him out of the suitcase and tried to give him CPR. But then she says on the phone, when she's on the phone with 911, he's telling her how to give CPR and what to do. She's like, he's purple. He's purple. He's like, listen to me, do CPR. As she's on the phone with the 911, he gurgles and she gets up. She's like, oh my God, he gurgled. He just gurgled. So I think that was telling because I think that meant that that was the first time she had given him CPR. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the yeah. whole time she's there telling her to keep doing CPR, she says she is and she's counting and stuff, but it doesn't really sound like she's out of breath or anything. And then she goes, we were playing hide and seek. Yeah, that is just so strange. Why I don't understand why drunk or not you'd get into a suitcase as an adult. I don't, I, it doesn't make, I don't know. To me, I'm not, I'm not able to wrap my head around how it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, then when the first on-scene officers got there, she said, she kept talking about her need. You know, she was thirsty. She needed a cigarette, how she was feeling. There was never any tears. She says, um, and, but she gives the same story. We were doing puzzles and, and artwork, and then we got tired of doing that, so we decided to hide, go play hide-and-seek. But she did add in at one point that they were playing music and started dancing with the dogs. And then she says, you know, and then George, he was laughing, too, about getting in the suitcase and getting zipped up. Okay. But then she turns nasty, doesn't she, and films it? Then, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, so her keep, when she keeps saying, we were having a good time, we were laughing, whatever, but then that she's filming it, it wasn't, there was no laughing going on. Now, it could have been some time period between when that happened. For all we know, she could have zipped him up around 10, 30-ish. He could have been upstairs for a while, and they could, she you know, they were laughing or whatever, and then she, after she threw him down the stairs, that's when it got serious, and that's when she pulls out the recorder. I'm thinking she started recording it because she's thinking to herself, I'm going to show you this tomorrow. This is what I can do to you because you treat me so bad. Yeah. That, I mean, that had to be my mentality. It seemed like she didn't realize she had videoed the she whole forgot. thing. She forgot. Yeah, she because she was she blackout didn't. drunk. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, her the evidence that she herself has basically created is a problem. Without that video. I mean, we could sit here and go into speculation without the video, but I think that there's so much more we could be looking at. And and I was like, I'm not even gonna go there because it's there. And that's the I cannot wait until day one when the prosecution puts lays out their theory of everything. Can't wait. I'm interested to see, oddly, because I'm a geek, if they try to keep, if the defense tries to keep it out. Um, now that there's a lawyer, he may file a motion to try to keep it out on, on what grounds I cannot think of right now at all. Um, but that's entirely possible. Be interesting to see how this plays out. The hearing, the next hearing is on the 3rd. What day is that? Tuesday. If you want to go live with me, you can. Okay. So I don't know what I have on Tuesday. Let me look. I, I was making notes for you in the drive-thru Chick-fil-A earlier. 
I was hungry. Hold on. Let me look and see. Um, did you get you some minis? Some little Chick-fil-A minis? I love those. The minis are so good, but no, I did not get them. You had asked. I was listening to some of your stuff while I was working. What if he comes in and tries to file a motion of venue? Change of venue. <clears throat> that would be a tough one. Well, here's the thing. Anymore, every case is is trying for that because of all the attention you know i mean it's not just the sarah boone case it's everybody you know everybody's watching all of these cases all the time it's like the new american pastime is to watch trials, uh, yeah. trials you know and while on in some cases i think that's great um in other cases you know i watch some of the chats and i hear some of the comments and things and i'm like oh I don't know. Like, are we ever going to be able to seat a fair jury ever again in the history of America? I'm, exactly. I'm concerned, you know, between what we think we know from television and what we think we know from watching. And like I told you, there's a whole bunch of stuff that people never, ever see. The jury never sees it. The public never sees it. There's evidence that does get kept out. There are negotiations that go on before a jury is ever impaneled. They have. They usually have a motion calendar that, like, a specific day to argue everything. Um, okay, so answers it, to your. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, if I'm ASA prosecutor, if I'm if I'm ASA catchatory, my first statement is gonna be if he tries to change the venue, he's gonna be like, Your Honor, the the defendant has stated herself that she has yep. uh, worldwide fans in Australia mm -hmm. and, and South Korea and everywhere else. So you know, one hundred percent. That's true. Uh, let's see. We may have covered this, but I'm just going to read them off to you. So answers to your questions you've asked on your coverage of Sarah. No, prison break cannot provide legal assistance. This is practicing law without a license. Okay. All trials I've been in, feet are shackled and hidden under the table and hands are free. I've never seen where uh, an attorney had to argue for that to happen. Like that just is protocol here. Uh, the jury only ever sees the defendant standing. There's always a cover of some sort. They can't see their feet. And they're wearing civilian clothes that are purchased usually by their family or provided by the public defender. Um, I've never seen the stun cuffs before. That's really interesting. Uh, anything filed to the court by anyone who is not a party is non-actionable and will be stricken. Uh, we talked about the judge reading her letters. Um, and those aren't, they don't conform to the rules of procedure. So technically they're not grounds for anything either. Um, it does seem to depend on a judge, whether they are reading the correspondence or not, um, once it's filed. But, but again, like I explained earlier, it's basically an ex parte communication, which is why mm -hmm. it's filed, which is why it's filed. And so that the, uh, other side has a chance to see it. Um, I don't think they're going to do the evidence viewing in the courtroom. I think, and maybe I could totally be wrong. I think that they noted it on the docket as an item to discuss as okay. to whether or not that had taken place because it just doesn't make sense to do it any other way than to transport her there. Or now that she has an attorney, take him different. there. Well, because now if he... It, well, they probably had already, they had it before th Wednesday. Maybe oh, they had to do it before Tuesday. They had the deadline to do the viewing was before Tuesday. Okay. So my guess is, again, guess, speculation, is that it's not going to happen in the view of the press on the 3rd. I, I think that's ridiculous. Can't happen um, now that she's got an attorney, right? No, I don't. I don't even think. I mean, I know I watched that, rewatch that argument. Um, you know, it comes down that to she doesn't know what she was arguing for, except she knew she didn't want them watching her look over her evidence. I don't see how that could ever be covered by the press, but I could be very wrong on that. I just, I, that just seems wrong to me because you're looking at evidence, like physical evidence from the scene that may not even be used. Often there's uh, biological material on 
some of that evidence, they're not, that gets moved once into court when, you know, and then to wherever it gets stored. I, I don't know. I just don't think that's going to happen. I could be wrong. I have been wrong before. Um, someone could put money on Sarah's phone account at the jail and her tablet if the jail has those, which we know that they do. So um, I think I explained to you at one point, I have an account where my clients can call me and it doesn't take money out of theirs, but each inmate has an account and you can put money. I don't because that's professionally not, you know, that crosses the line, but a friend or a family member can put money or in Sarah's case, a fan could put money into Sarah's phone account. They can do that online and then she could make non-collect calls. Um, and then you're correct in that every entry in the docket is for making a record because they'll know she'll appeal. Mail is acceptable for notice of hearing if someone does not have email. Um, it's required now to e-file, except I guess if you're incarcerated because you can't. Um, I don't believe they'd ever give her access to Wi-Fi like even control. I don't see that happening, especially now if the, if this lawyer goes forward, there's no way. Um, when I go into a jail, it's only recently that I've been able to take my phone and there's no access to Wi-Fi. Like it doesn't even pop up mm. as an option. I just think her brother and Brian's the only one that could be getting her any kind of money. Now she's had two visitors from um, the people who I looked up and one was an RN and, the, and their husband was a GC, but I don't know a whole lot. I mean, I couldn't connect the dots as to like a family relation. It could be like family friends or something. Hmm. I don't know if they're helping her whatsoever. I don't know. I mean, it seems like the only people that have ever been mentioned to my knowledge are Brian and the brothers. I thought she only had one brother. I didn't even realize she had two. So it shows you how much I know about her family, I, I, not, which makes me feel like she's probably did have some kind of trauma in her childhood. I don't know how much, but yeah, the fact that she's got a brother that's like been, of course that could happen in the best of homes. There's no telling with that, but yeah, she's got a brother that's like a career cr criminal low life. I've got, I've got one of those too. So I guess it happens in any family, but it's, it's more common than you think how different children can come out but yeah so but but do you believe anything that comes out of her damn mouth though no i mean think about it everything that comes out of her mouth she's a i think she's a habitual liar she oh, says 100%. whatever she needs to say to get where she needs to go in life and she doesn't care who she's gonna step on her in her way there even her child i think if she could throw him under the bus she would yeah um you know, she he was to blame other people. I mean, just listening to her, you know, like I said, I, I, since I, I knew I was going to have this conversation with you, I've tried to go back and listen to some of the, like your coverage, but also other people's coverage of, of her and just listening to the, to the way in which she especially talked to the court. Like that was mind blowing to me. <laughs> I mean... What do you have to think to be calling a judge out the way that she was like a, a school teacher reprimanding him? Yeah. It was, it was just absolutely. Uh, like I think what, she's lucky that she's got Wooten, that she doesn't have Wooten anymore. Cause I think Wooten was just about ready to just throw the book at her. I, like I said, I'd, I was not paying all that much attention to the judges. I, you know, when this first started, I had no idea it was going to turn into like a thing. And then I had my own work to do and, uh, oh, I got caught up in, in other cases. And then she just popped back into my recommended history and you fell in there. And I was like, all right, click. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I don't, so yeah, it's mm. going to be really interesting to see it play out. And I hope it does because these these extended stays at the county jail aren't good for anybody. You know, the county jail is not set up for long-term living. It's not 
it's not good for them to to have people that I've got a guy that's been sitting in prison or in jail, excuse me, for six years waiting on a trial. And we do not have a trial date. And do you know anything about commissary costs and stuff like that? A little bit. So I was pulling up, I found a website that does the, where you can send gift baskets and all that to the inmate. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the options that they had and I'm just like, oh, that's horrible. The that's food horrible. is terrible. Yeah. Even, and even the commissary doesn't have good options. Expensive. It's outrageously expensive. You know, if you want to see actually a good behind the scenes of jails, watch Locked Up. It's on, um, it used to be an A&E show. But like yeah. they had the they had the Tampa jails. I watched anything that was on the jails in Florida, and it was really really interesting because I'm in and out of Florida jails, you know. And before I became an investigator, I had never been anywhere near a jail. So, and I still can't tell you all the things that happened because I've never been on that side where I am you know, arrested for something. I, I can only explain what I, what I have seen and what I do know, but that, that particular show, I believe it's called Lucked Up, um, does a really good job. It's older now, but it does, it did a really good job of explaining things. I even recognized some of the guards. Do they allow the prisoners to smoke? Nope. Okay. No, that is not true. What other myths can I bust for you? <laughs> well, and I kind of figured that was something that's no longer available, but they can't even go outside to smoke anymore. I think that maybe they used to let them go outside no, to smoke. But, absolutely yeah. not. Uh, the other thing, which I think I told you, and you may or may not have known, was any incoming mail does not go directly to the inmate. It gets scanned. So the inmate does not get the original copy or the original document because people have soaked the documents into drug solutions. I no expert on that, but have found ways to, to um, transmit drugs through stamps, envelopes, and paper. So oh. every, everything gets scanned and then given to the inmate and the original stays in the mail room. I know what I wanted to ask you about the, the paper, the staples. Did you see the thing on the staples? So interesting. Where? Okay, you're going to have to tell me about this because I can't take papers that have been stapled into the jail. They caught a paper clip in my bag the other day that I didn't even realize was there. I had to remove that. I can't take binder clips. Um, so, so I saw something somewhere that said she had stapled her uniform. Where did she get her hands on a stapler? I don't, I don't know if she necessarily had to have the stapler to do this. I, or if somebody just handed her some staples to, to she used them as kind of a sewing, a, 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 and, and she wasn't trying to do anything horrible with them. She was trying to sew up the side of her pants where her hips are. So it was like, I don't know if she was busting out or she was trying to take them in. Uh -huh. But yeah, she just kind of, it's like, it's like as if you were to take, um, you know, you see surgery or whatever. She took the staples and kind of just tried to pull the, it's not even really done that well. But it was pulling her pants together around the hip area. And uh, I was just like, okay. But they said that people use staples to do like prison tattoos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But somebody speculated that she got it from a visitor. But then you brought something. real. It had to have been a professional visitor because. Yeah, it would like have to be a contact visit. And then it's just going to depend on the scre screening. And what I remember of that jail the last time I was there was, oh my God, were they serious? And that was a couple of years ago. Um, they, they had a really high screening security protocol, um, especially I, compared to my, my more local jails, which is, is starting to really ramp up on the scanning of things. So even if an attorney walks in with paperwork to show her, and let's say they got a copy for her and it's got a staple in it. They're going to scan that. Well, no, from an attorney, they wouldn't scan it. If they have coming to. From, they even coming from it. an attorney? Mm -hmm. Even so if we send stuff legal mail, it does not matter. 
So the only way she could get those staples, she could have like pulled them out of like maybe she stole them out of there when they weren't looking or something from the. I mean, it's po it's possible it came out of papers that were stapled together that were in those boxes. Nope. You know, it's entirely possible those weren't checked. When I go to a jail, it's just like going to the airport, right? You take your bag and you put your laptop and your phone, which phones are new, that it's only been the last few years that we can take phones in. Um, I put my laptop in there. I put my phone, the electronic key fob for my car. And then I dump my big tote bag full of paper on top of it. And I walk through a metal detector. And they wand me. And then they, if something shows up on their screen, they're like, there's a paper clip. You have to take that out. I'm like, sorry, <laughs> here you go. You can, you can, they're like, you can collect it on your way back out. I'm like, how many paper clips do y'all have back there? Because I'm guessing it's a lot. Yeah. Because who's who they pick up to collect their paper clips? <laughs> their so, paper clips and staple removers. Yeah. Right. So to my knowledge, uh, it was taking forever for, for, we had a sovereign citizen um, pro se defendant and it was taking forever for him to get stuff from us. And he was complaining about it via his prolific letter writing. And I was like, why, why is this taking so long? And then somebody, I don't know if it was him or somebody else finally explained to me about the scanning and that I was trying to save paper by double printing, you know, double sided printing. And that's a nightmare for them because that gets scanned and then it's all out of order. Yeah. And if there's no page numbers, then they they have a horrible time figuring it out. But I'm told and I can double check when I'm out there this weekend. If I hand them papers. When we're in the room. Those get turned over and scanned before they can keep them. And I will double check. Because I have to go out there this weekend and talk to. But you're not an like, attorney. You're an investigator. If it's an attorney, is it different? Oh, because, because I can, I can legal documents are legal documents. The, my work product is it's still different. subject to attorney client privilege. Okay. That makes sense. And there are attorneys who would do this, who would traffic in drugs. So things can be labeled legal mail. In that maybe the contents shouldn't be read. But I don't see how I'll confirm this, you know, I'll look into this a little further. Okay. I don't see how they're letting. Continue. Yeah, I don't see how they they would allow the inmate to just have stuff. I, and, I, and again, I think also it depends on the jail. It depends on the jail and it depends on if the, the deputies if they know you if they see you all the time if they know the inmate if they you know there's there's a lot of discretion i think that goes on in, inside jail oh well i want to do this again okay. i think you're i think you're enjoying it are you enjoying it mm -hmm. okay because i don't i never have anybody to talk to except for the people that work on my cases <laughs> All right. Well, and we could talk about other cases, too. We don't have to always talk about this one. But I like how we're getting into um, just kind of learning the ins and outs. You're helping me tremendously because, like I said, this is the first time I've really had to truly go into dockets and understand and try to even, you know, honestly, before I was like, I'm not going to read the Lego mumbo jumbo. But now I'm starting to really try to pay attention and understand. It. Um, well, listen, Sam, I really appreciate you for being here today. And I thank you for your time. I know you have to go because you have to go meet with one of your uh, clients. So, um, I definitely want to do this again if you want to do this again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to talk to me. I, I really enjoyed it. It's been fun. And, and I'd maybe we can come back. That'd be awesome. I think uh, I think some of our subs would love to see you like on a live at some point in time. I don't think uh, the Boone case is a good one for you to be go live on, but that's completely up to you just because they're going to want to ask you questions and they shouldn't. So. But. Right. I think that cases that I am familiar with, which is to say that um, either I know somebody who's working on it or I have in some way, shape or form worked on it, are probably not the best cases for me to discuss. But there okay. are plenty of other ones out there. Yes. And you can always ask her general questions. She'll take yes, general questions. Could. Absolutely. I will take process questions. Why is this happening? Explain this. That I can do.
and, right. and absolutely will. I could totally see you and I doing like weekly reports with each other. Okay, this came up. What happened? Why are they doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. Sounds like fun. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck on your case over there. Thank you.